Thank you, thank you. <laughs>
to go, you know, whatever direction you want. We are all ears and excited for some great information. So I'm just going to get going with the questions. Throw some questions at Bill. All right. Oops. I got the wrong You got them in order? Sorry. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Off to a great start, Ash. Come on. Um, did you play any sports in high school? If so, which ones? And were you lifting back then? Yes. I started athletics in about the third or fourth grade. Oh. Playing baseball, basketball, wrestling, uh, track and field. Uh, whatever sport, I, I love to compete. And so I would just, any sport I could do. Uh, eventually, in high school, I, uh, I played football. It was a defensive, offensive lineman. And then in uh, wrestling, I wrestled 190-pound weight class. And in track and field, it was uh, through the shot put discus and did some sprinting. In fact, the last time I checked on my high school, the only record I still held was in sp the sprints. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, I really, I love to compete. I was never great. I went to state in uh, wrestling and in um, track and field. I uh, was not all, even all conference in football. Uh, but you know what? It all worked out wonderful for me in the long run because uh, I used that to go into uh, 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 college and, you know, play sports. But yes, I lifted. I did not know how to lift. We didn't even, I used to say, say wouldn't it be cool if there's a lift where you just bend over, pick up the bar, and stood up with it? <laughs> and our coach did, showed us the deadlift. I mean, we were barbaric. <laughs> um, I had 220 pounds. Now, th I thought this this is a pretty cool. Uh, I had 220 pounds. That's all the weight I had. And um, I was a shot putter. So I thought, clean and jerks would be great. Well, to do it with two hands got easy. And I got to where I did it with one hand oh, wow. in high school. Holy yeah. Geez. Yeah. So it was a little bit acrobatic, you know, getting yeah. the weight up, balancing it out and then with a regular barbell. But, uh, you know, I was trying to help my become a shot putter, you know, do the shot put. So that, you know, I knew I had some strength, but my bench press sucked. I mean, I've probably benched 245 in high school. That's great. Um, yeah, I wasn't that I wasn't very strong. But in the ninth grade, to win my conference championship, I did uh, 600 push-ups a day. Wow! Every day. Oh yeah, 12 sets of 50. Um, just I was relentless. You know, when I was 14, my mom and dad bought me a weight set, and they swore up and down that for years. They thought the TV just automatically had a barbell that just went in front of the TV. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I didn't know they were called floor presses, but that's what I did. I just, I do floor presses every night, all night long, you know. Um, <laughs> but we didn't know a whole lot of stuff. I probably never squatted because I didn't know there, well, I didn't know that you could do squats, right. you know. So, okay. yeah, that's it was barbaric back then. Wow. <laughs> But it sounds like you always just had that passion to compete, and it definitely... Always compete. Always wanted to be strong. Yep. Nice. Always. Always. Since I was a little boy. Very cool. Very cool. Um, when and how did you get into powerlifting, and who, if anybody specifically, introduced you to powerlifting? When I was in college, I uh, had a knee injury playing football, and a classmate of mine, John Hoffman, took me aside and said, hey, I think you could be really strong. You could be really good. And I was pretty good at deadlifting at that, you know, for, you know, for, the, for us, you know, that back in those days, I thought it was pretty good. And um, he went, uh, he encouraged me to come with him and train with him. And he was, he, I thought he was really good bench press. He benched over 400 pounds at 181 oh, wow. um, back in the day, you know. So uh, we, back then there was no bench shirt back then at all, you know. It was just absolutely raw. We we used uh, the marathon squat suits, which looks like similar to what a bench shirt that we're using now with the elasticity in there, you know. Yep. So it's, what's been around has come back around, you know. But, um, you know, nasty little knee wraps that look like ace bandages. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I went and uh, I finished college, and I went to the first drug-free nationals in Allentown, Pennsylvania, uh, in 1983, um, I uh, benched 
341 pounds. It was before they had the round system that we currently use. What they did was they load the bar with the lowest weight and then add weight for the next guy. Mm. So I took my first, my second, and my third attempt, and then they added 35 pounds for the second worst guy to start. Uh, I was that bad. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I I was just, I just thought I had a genetically weak upper body. You know, I thought for sure, but I could do dips with like five plates. Oh, wow. All the way down, all the way up. So, you know, my, my mentor told me, he said, if you ever can figure out how to incorporate that into the bench, you can bench a lot of weight, which got me, th- you know, thinking. But and that's what I ended up doing. I, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of weight, huh? Um, so you kind of already answered this, but um, maybe you can touch on it again. When and which powerlifting meet was your first, and what were your numbers at your first powerlifting meet? I know you kind of okay. touched on um, I did a small meet in high school, but I don't remember what the numbers were. My first meet was in 1981 in Char- Charlottesville, Virginia, a uh, USPF meet. Um, I, don't, I don't remember what I lifted at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> was it a push pull bill or if all three or all three? Oh, all three. Okay. There, there was no back then. There was no option. You had to do all, all three, three lifts. Okay. So, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, um, but I, I was really I did good in the squat. I would and I eventually became pretty good at squatting. By the time I came out to Seattle to coach, I was squatting pretty good, but uh, still my bench was still lagging behind. Okay, it's crazy, <laughs> crazy how things change, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, so again, you kind of already answered this, but um, did you start out equipped or raw? And did you um, start out full power or have you always been bench only? You know, that was kind of. Oh, okay. Right. okay. All right. Uh, back then there was uh, everybody lifted with the same gear. Okay. All right. There was no such thing as raw equipped. Hmm. Uh, you know, we just. If you chose to go raw and not use a squat suit or knee wraps, that was your choice. Okay. You know, um, the shirts, when they came out first in 1986, I went to Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania for a meet, and I lost by 15 pounds. And I remember the guy who beat me, he was going to wear a bench shirt. I said, I'll never wear one of those, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and uh, and uh, he beat me by 15 pounds, and I thought, Darn, that shirt was the difference, you know? So, hey, guess what I did? I ordered me one of those bench shirts, you know? Yeah. And, uh, man, I hated the black shirts, man. They cut your armpits wide open. Oh, yeah. Hurt like crazy. I could, you know, still don't know how much they helped. But, you know, but I wasn't going to give up 15 pounds, right. you know? No. So, uh, but I, I continued to do three lifts uh, all the way up until the mid to late 90s. Uh, I think 97, I went to the last... ADFPA national championships. I had Ed Cohn as my coach. Wow. Uh, that was pretty nice. Yeah. And then uh, I was in a car accident and hurt my back. And I, between all the coaching at the University of Washington, I just, I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do all three lifts. And I thought, well, the bench press is going pretty good. Let's, let's see where we can go with it. And I just went exclusively to the bench press in the uh, late 90s. Okay. 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 Um, what are your best equip lifts in all three? If you've. Oh, you see, if I did in a workout, I did a thousand seven of squat. Oh. Wow. In a workout. But then I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I went too long without air. Uh, we were barbaric. I mean, we put six forty fives on, then put the hundreds on the outside. And that bar was whipping. whipping all right. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It was crazy. <laughs> And <laughs> going down with the weight, it was, I could, you could barely tell the bar was moving. Yeah, oh. you know, be going down. Oh. And coming up was even slower. And I had one of those old, uh, bigger, faster, stronger beepers that you put on your leg that tells you when you went low enough. Right. Ooh, that's- well, the first time I tried it, I forgot to turn the thing <laughs> on. <laughs> and I'm down there at the bottom going, man, my head's going to blow up. I mean, I got to be low enough, you know? I finally crashed, and everybody's like, oh, you know, because they knew I was leaving to go to Seattle, so it was my last lift in, in, in Virginia. 
And I was mad. And so I stripped the bar down, put the weight back up, and uh, tried it again. And I came up, I came down so slow, you could barely see the bar going down. Wow. I came up twice as slow. Oh. And I'm up halfway, and I'm like, I'm going to black out. I don't have no air. And I'm like, screw it. I'm going to get a 1,000-pound squat. I'm going to be able to say I did it. And I got up with it. They grabbed the bar. That's the last thing I remember. I fell on the ground, went in convulsions, oh. started puking up blood. Oh, God. And everybody was like, oh, man, you're, you're crazy. And I'm like, yeah, but I squatted <laughs> <laughs> That's going to the grand. Puke and blood. That's yeah, hardcore, Bill. Club. Wow. That's intense. Yeah. So, Holy crap. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I used to love the squat, but um, I, I, I haven't done a squat in forever. Last time I did a squat was when I was coaching with the Seahawks. We were at training camp, and I tried to put a buffalo bar on my back, and it looked like someone stuck a vibrator up my butt. I was like, <laughs> 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 Um, have you ever competed overseas and if so where oh my yes I've been to Sweden Slovakia oh. Denmark twice wow uh, yeah yeah all with the IPF okay uh, never had a good experience uh, <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> it was it was the guys are great all right uh, they're all they're wonderful guys but like when we go to Denmark you're practicing, I'm strong as can be. And they tell me we've changed a couple of rules. I'm like, right before the meet. And so they said, your feet have to be flat. I'm like, well, I'm okay. They said, well, your shoe has a little bit of a round to it. And we, the judges may not give you the start call because your shoes have a little roundness. So now they're also doing the, where they had the all three judges had to give the start call for the head judge to say start. Oh, my gosh. So you're taking the weight out there, and you're holding the weight, and the whole time you're thinking, are my shoes, are my feet <laughs> flat, are my shoes, am I going to get a start call? And, and you're wasting all this energy, right. and you, if you had had an opportunity to prepare for it, you could I could have I, I mean, I was crushing my weights warming up, that, and then I ended up bombing, and I was like, you know, you spend like, Five to seven thousand dollars total to go to this right. session, and for them to change the rules on you that's right then and there, I'm like, like this not. I'm not playing this game yeah, no that's, more. That's shitty, Bill. Too much into it. You know, people. You come back and people are like, "Hey, why? What happened to you? Why didn't you make a live?" You know, and I got sponsors that were, you know, giving me a lot of money, and I'm like, "I'm sorry, I tried." They changed the rules. Well, well why didn't you know about it? I'm like, they didn't tell none of us. You know, Bill, was that in uh, so was that in Denmark I, only or? That that was a that was the situation when I went to okay. Denmark the, the first okay. time. You know, it's not it's not always that way, but you know, I'm just like it's just some of the rules. I think like uh, you know the, the head has to stay on the bench, all right. But you see the women with big hair; their heads are coming up, but, but you can't tell because they got all the hair. <laughs> so I'm thinking. I'm going to come out there with one of them wigs on. rainbow <laughs> wigs on. And, uh, there you go. Now wow. you're thinking. <laughs> if they say something, I'll say you're discriminating. Right. right. Texas. You know, you check nobody else's wig. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, Bill, when you went to Denmark, how many days in advance did you go over there? Did you go five days in advance to adapt to the time change? or? Yes. You uh, fly out Monday night, and you stay up basically all night. Because the flight, you know, in, and then you land, and then they get you all on a bus together, okay. all the lifters, and then they transport you to the meat site. And it's really kind of cool because you're sitting there with lifters from literally all over right. the world, you know. And I remember um, some of the guys, you know, because I was older, um, a strength coach, they kind of opened up to me. I remember one trip, they, uh, they, they said, so uh, how, how, how often do you uh, bench? I said, three times a week. And how, how, how do you go heavy every time? I said, yeah, pretty heavy every time. And they said, I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> they said, so how long have you been doing that? And I said, well, I'll impress them. I've been doing it for a long time. And they you know, thinking that, you know, I'd show them how my endurance, you know. And they looked at me and they said, 
so uh, how long's your bench been stuck? And I went, crap, how do you do that? <laughs> 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 so, uh, but you get to see new ideas, right. you know, new, fresh ideas of what people do. And they're really open and they'll talk to you about it, you know, and, and it really helped me develop some of the theories that I have right now is seeing what they were doing um, versus America, because we all just share what we do within our country. Right. But outside the country, they do some unique stuff, you know. Okay. 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 Really cool learning experience, huh? Yeah. Okay. Very cool. What are some of your favorite accessory exercises for the bench press? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. This is a huge can of oh, worms, okay? Yay. Take it away, man. All right. <laughs> Ryan's I, getting his I, pin uh, down. I got my pin on. I'm going to take notes. Yeah. Okay. Are you guys ready sure. for this? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I'm going to start out by saying I have three major influences on uh, my programming. Okay. Okay? One is the former Soviet Union weightlifting coach, Dr. Gregory Goldstein, okay. who where Boris Shekhov got the same, same information okay. from. Okay. Um, he told us we, uh, in 1991, with, when we went up with the New York Giants, that it would take him 40 hours, actually, yeah, 40 hours to write up a four-week routine. Whoa. And I thought, when he told me that, I said, bull crap. Yeah, bull crap. Yeah. Three days later, I said, bull crap. There's no way you can get it done in 40 hours. <laughs> it's that complex. Wow. All right? Yeah. It's that complex. And so when people say, hey, can you write me up a bench right. routine? I'm like, no. <laughs> no. I don't have 40 hours or whatever to write you up a bench routine. It's, it's so complex. To put them things together. But when you do, everybody goes, how in the world are you getting so strong? Because my numbers are so precise. I um, I, I use um, uh, one and a quarter pound plates to make sure that my jumps are precisely the numbers that I want. So I don't take a five, you know, or two and a half kilo jump. I take a one and a quarter right. kilo jump. Okay. It's that, that precise. But um, the other one is, of course, West Side, Louis. Right. I love Louis. I, Louis established a huge foundation of knowledge, of training. I owe him so much. Um, I admire him greatly. Um, but I don't do a speed okay. day. I do, I, I do do some max effort stuff, but I do it after my regular bench workout, not as my primary. Okay. It's a little different. And then the last one is the Bulgarians. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with the Bulgarians and what they did in the 80s, but the Bulgarians dominated the world of weightlifting, okay, to the point where they won every single weight class, right. all right? And not only did they win every weight class, the guy in the weight class below could have won the weight class above if it wasn't for the other Bulgarian, okay? Oh, wow. Now, what they did was so unusual, all right? They would train uh, five times, five seven times a day they would max up to 17 times in a workout yeah it's crazy i've heard a little bit of that you know yeah. everybody yeah and everybody said well they get away with it because they could do it because of yeah. drugs well every country was on right. drugs so bull crap throw that out the right. window all right but and of course i tried it okay and i tried every version of it that i could possibly do but what I got out of it was this. The best lift for the bench press is the bench press. Okay. That makes okay. sense. Okay. Oh. Now, the further you get away from the bench press as your assistant lift, the less it's going to contribute to your bench press. That makes sense. Okay. Now follow along with me okay. on this, okay? Because I'm going to All right. So... My other theory is called extended range of motion training, okay? If I want to be stronger at the bench press, then I need to do a mo a, an exercise that increases the range of motion that I is my normal bench press, okay? So a narrow grip bench is the number one assistant level, okay? So a narrow grip bench is simply a longer push. Yes. That's all it is, all right? 
but it's so close to the bench press that it contributes greatly. We're going to get back to this idea of energy consumption. I'm not wasting any energy in my training. And what people do is they pick and choose exercises that confuses the motor pattern of the bench press, and they end up not being able to lift big weights because of it. So they do these the exercises, especially the bodybuilding movements. Yeah, you look great, but does it contribute to the bench? When people ask me, what's your raw bench? I'm like, if you need, if you think having a bigger raw bench is going to make my shirt bench goes up, it just automatically, you're wrong. All right? My raw bench feeds the shirt. If it doesn't make the shirt go up, then I don't need to do that raw bench. It, does, it doesn't matter if I go up 30 pounds on my raw bench if my shirt bench doesn't go up because that's what I want to be right. good at. So all my raw benching is designed to be done to contribute to the shirt. So when you ask me what are my favorite assistant exercises, they're all very closely related to the prime movement of the makes bench. Makes sense. Okay. Does that yes, make sir. sense? Absolutely. And you can, it's like, you can confuse the motor pattern. You know, I always say, are you training your dog to sit or sick them? And that's when we train the muscle. Are we training the muscle to sit or sick them? You know, I'm going to train that muscle. I know that I'm not the strongest man alive, okay? Dave Tate one time came out to the University of Washington. He said, you're not that strong. <laughs> I said, I don't have to be. As long as I lift more than you, you think that's I right. am. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> but that's the whole trick. It's, it's, it's all about how much you can lift. And, and that's why I like the shirt so much. It's so complex. It allows me to go and use the science, the knowledge that I have, to allow me to exhibit a number that's out of this world. Okay. Okay. That that makes, that's deep, Bill. Yeah, but it makes per it's perfectly sense. Yes. Um, uh, I don't mean to bounce off subject, but how many times a week, um, like leading up to your eleven twenty nine bench, were you bench pressing? Uh, is it was it three times a week? Yes. Really? I bench three times a week, and it varies in um, the amount of volume that I get in with okay. the shirt. You know, the, 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 this is part of the reason why, another reason why I, I retired is because I was having to drive three and a half hours down to Muzz's gym to go down with my buddy, Doug yeah. Smitty, uh, to work with him and his spotters because I needed to find someone who could live right. off for me to get the bar yep. in position. And then I drive three and a half hours. It's a whole day, yep. every Sunday, the whole day from 5 a.m. in the morning till about yeah, 6 o'clock at night. Yeah, you know, you know, so, you know, I told my wife, I said, I'm going to do this because this is going to be my last yeah. meet and I'm going to, I, I got to do what I got to do to get this bar in position because if I can't get in position, That's ain't right. going to happen. And it's, yeah, so your spotters are priceless. Yes. But I was every week, I would be sitting there going, calling, texting guys, hey, can you come spot me? Can you come spot me? Can you come spot me? And it's like, you know, here I am 12 hours before the workout and I only got two lift yeah. off guys and, or you show up and you only got two guys and you don't have yep. a third, you know? And I'm like, it was, it just so frustrating, oh, yeah. you know? So, but, so uh, those three, those three days, Bill, was that like Tuesday, Thursday, sa Sunday, or how were they spread? Yeah. It, it, yeah, it would, yeah. Tuesday, Thursday, or t yeah, Tuesday, okay. Thursday, and then, uh, Sunday. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, very, it, 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 it varies, like I said, my intensity on my raw day, technically, technically, every raw day is a speed day, dynamic okay. day, okay. okay? All right, um, I designed the program like this, okay? If, um, if, I can do the, if I can do the weight, say, 10 times, I'm only going to do six, okay? okay? All right, but, because think about this. After you do six and your limit is 10, how fast is the bar moving on reps 8, Slower. 9, and 10? It's not no. moving very fast. Yeah. Okay, so the training effect is based off of the last rep. Not the first few reps, the last rep. 
So if you're moving the bar slow, then you're practicing to move the slow. bar slow in the sense. meat. Yeah. Okay. So when I set up my program, I set it up to where, yeah, I can do the weight. I can do more, but I'm moving the weight every time at the speed in which I need to be able to move it in the meat. And that's why I can move the, that's why I can, my concentric press is always pretty darn fast. Um, but now I'm going to throw, I'm throwing out some secrets. Yeah, here, okay? yeah, I appreciate it, Bill. All right, are you ready Absolutely. for this Absolutely. If you, because it's called compensatory acceleration training. Cat. Okay. Um, the 225 pound bench press test for the NFL is not an endurance test at all. Okay. Because at 35 seconds, plus or minus five, you're done. Whether you go fast or slow, all right? And so what the key is, is you got to move the bar. It's a straight speed test. So you got to move the bar as fast as possible to get as many reps done in that time before you run out of time, all right? Think about this. You do a set of 10, and you do it with a really, really light weight. You can do it really, 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 really slow, right? But instinctively, what do you do when you put more weight on the bar? You start doing it faster, right? Mm -hmm. Because you know you're going to run out of time. Okay? I'm setting the precedence so you understand this. All right? So when you go to max and you bring the bar down and you touch and you go to push the weight up and you miss it at the top, is it always a lockout problem or did you run out of time? Because the heavier the weight gets, the shorter the window is to exhibit That's your right. strength. Okay. okay? So the problem is when you train with compensatory acceleration exclusively, you're going to develop a problem with the lockout. I tried board presses, pin presses, all that stuff to work my lockout. Didn't help. What we came up with was instead is a tempo bench press. We do a set of five, usually around 62%. Okay. Uh, we'll, pick, we'll, act, we'll pick our feet up off the ground, so we're not having any okay. leg drive, which increases the range yep. of motion. We'll bring our grip in slightly, so we have a narrow yep. grip. And we'll bring the bar down at about three second, two and a half second tempo, okay? It's not real slow, not real, it's not real fast, but it's under control. But we barely touch on the chest. Now, here's the key. Instinctively, we go, boom, we want to jack That's that right. thing right off our chest. All right? On this exercise, you want to just barely squeeze that weight up. Barely squeeze it up so that when you get to the top, you're squeezing with everything you can to finish it out. By the time you're on reps four and five, it feels like you're doing a max That's right. bench. But you're only doing you're only doing sixty two right. percent. Okay. That's so cool. And it, it, it I for years couldn't lock out you know couldn't couldn't grind through a lockout. And this I all of a sudden I went <clears throat> and everybody like oh my gosh Bill you're <laughs> you're going through you're getting the, you know grinding through. So yeah, that's one of my little tricks. Okay. My is that is that sixty two percent set in stone or is it, does that vary um, with that particular exercise or is it always uh, it, it varies, yeah. We okay. vary it, it, but but not. I I just picked that number because it, it depends on on how much you did prior to right. that. The the pre exhaustion. If you're not exhausted, then you could probably go as heavy as maybe sixty seven percent. You know, a lot when you're talking, Bill, it makes me think back to my um, days prior to meeting Louis Simmons, and when I trained, I I trained explosively in all my lifts, and I didn't train slow. And I, I wonder if that's how I um, um, acclimated. Uh, uh, a, a tremendous, tremendous amount of speed in my bench press um, prior to doing any speed benching in Louis Simmons stuff because I trained with that uh, particular uh, b bar weight that allowed me to move it like I did, uh, like I wanted to in a shirt. And it made me think a little yeah. bit when you told yeah. that story. So that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. See, so when people ask me, do I do train dynamically? Yes. Most of my training technically is dynamic, but it's not a speed day as – the West Side normally right. does. Okay. Okay. So do you do you do any like 
tricep push downs or rolling dumbbells or those kind of things, or you just really keep it okay? okay. No, I have one tricep exercise I do. That's it. I don't, I've tried Incredible. them all and I don't get nothing out of them. Okay. And uh, I, I, I can't even, I can't demonstrate, but you basically, we have the bar set at either 24, 28, or 32 inches from okay. the floor. Okay. And we did in a push up type position. And we're going to bring ourselves, our forehead down to the bar and do a tricep extension where we're the we're body the, weight okay. is your weight. Okay. The, yeah, the bar stationary. And we'll do sets of 20 between uh, either, depending on the day, three sets okay. of 20 up to nine sets of 20. Well, I just found a new That's exercise. Funny. They're called uh, Gillespie extensions. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll feel it. It, it. The whole key is, is when you're doing them, is if you're feeling it about three four inches above and below your elbows, boom, you're doing okay. it right. I don't care. I don't care what the position is. As long as you're feeling it right there, okay. it's right. And don't be shocked uh, the first day, next day, how sore okay. you're going to be. Just, and your upper back gets a lot of development out of it. Um, when I'm on vacation, shoot, I'll pull out a towel, find a countertop, boom, I, I'll hit 100. And uh, back in September, uh, I had a pec tear, and um, I wanted to I wanted to hit like 450 for five by five, and um, I went on uh, to the beach right afterwards, and I did hundreds, of, hundreds of these. Came back because it really wasn't directly contracting the pec; it was just filling it full of blood, and I just constantly was filling it full of blood. Man, I came back three weeks later and did the 450. For five by five, I mean, I turned black and blue. Whoa. Oh, wow! So, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I find ways to work around injuries. like injuries. You know, I find a, I find a way, and um, I'm not afraid. I've never been afraid of hard work okay. ever. And it's just that's the key. You got to, you got to, you know. My, we go on vacation. My wife understands. We're gonna go work out. I'm gonna <laughs> work out. She understands that's that. Good. She, she, she don't like necessarily like it, but she's supportive and. She understands, and I'm going to go work out because I tried to explain to her. If I don't work out, I'm going to get hurt. So when I right. come back, and she's she understands that, and I and I'm trying to be as gracious as I can with my time. But I have actually gone and did a workout like at three in the morning because we were going on a trip with the family, and I had to get it in. But she don't. I don't miss workouts nice. ever. I, I like that, Bill. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I try to preach to my guys too. You know, we don't miss workouts unless we're dead in jail or in the hospital or have COVID now. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, then you find a way to get it yeah. done at home, but you know, yeah, you're jail. right. You know, you, these guys, you, if, if my guys miss a workout, I, I don't care where they are in the training cycle. I tell them, all right, you're starting over again from ground zero. And they're like, what? I no, I, I just missed one workout. I don't care. I know what you got to do. I know what's happening. And you miss the rhythm. It's so sad. The way I designed the programs, I, 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 it's all about gradual increase slowly. And it, it, it's just so fragile. And if you miss a workout, boom, it's, it's over. I got to start you all over again. And so it's the guys have seen it. They've seen me to do it. And so they refuse to miss the workout. Because Good. That's <laughs> discipline. Good, yeah. 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 That's awesome. <laughs> all right. That was, that was good. Good. Great information. Um, what was one of your favorite, most memorable powerlifting meets? And can you tell us about it a little uh, bit? Oh man, there's been uh, several. I used to love the Wobble Worlds. I loved it. It was, Gus ran a great meet. It was, just, it was so much fun to go there. Um, I really enjoyed those meets. Um, miss it, miss it a lot. Um, uh, of course, you know, and now, now I lift in the 365 Strong Federation, and Bill Clary is the president. And I have never met a meat director in my entire life that is so uh, unselfish. Um, just when they, these guys say I'm all about the lifter, this guy is crazy about it's all about the lifter. And uh, I, it's the things he's done. I, we had a meet at Liberty, and uh, the rental space was two hundred and fifty dollars. I wanted to have a meet at Liberty, and so because it was in my hometown, 
So I paid the $250, figuring, you know, but with travel, food, hotel, I'll break even, you know? And uh, he says, Bill, we're not going to get a lot of entries, but if I get enough, I'm going to pay you half that wow. money back. And I'm like, no, you don't have to. He did it. He handed me a check for $125. And I'm like, dude, you didn't have to do that, you know? But it's just, it's just that kind of guy, you know? Um, he, he just... You know, it's just for me to know. That's what I didn't like about the IPF is I just felt like they were trying to make everything I could they could to see me miss yeah. a lift, you know. And like one time, my my team we won our first conference championship in football in the school's history. All right, I want to celebrate with them really bad, but I you know we were away and uh, down in North Carolina, and I drove down to the. Uh, to the game so I could go catch a plane. I drove and then stayed in a hotel, uh, flew all morning uh, to Denver, walked in to the meet site, and they announced that my name was up next, Grant. I'm like, whoo, I made it just in time. And one of the officials says, you can't weigh in. I said, why not? She says, you haven't had your equipment checked. I said, that's not a rule. She goes, yes, mm -hmm. it is. And I'm like, no, I'm going to go in there and I'm weighing in. If they tell me I got to check my going, I will. I went in there, I weighed in, and then I came back out. And she goes, yeah, I was just joking. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this ain't funny. All right? So, yeah. So then on my second attempt, they throw an extra 25-kilo plate on there. They lift it off three, because you can't have your own lift-off guys at the USAPO. Right. They have to have a different guy that lifts off for everybody. So he lifts it off. And by the third time, I'm thinking, what do I got to do to save my life? I didn't even think about lifting the weight. So then they tell me, you could try it. We'll, we misload the bar. You could try it after this next competitor. Like an idiot, I said yes. I should have said no, I'll pass. And maybe my triceps might recover in time for the third attempt. Missed it. Bombed. And I got, I got from the official, hey, my bad. I'm like, Dude, you know what your badge just cost me? It cost me $4,000 in sponsorship. Now, on the other hand, I went to a meet with Gus. Gus, the, the bar was misloaded. So what we're going to do, Bill, is this. When everybody takes their second attempt, that's going to be your first. When everybody takes their second attempt, that's going to be your, uh, your their, their third attempt, that's going to be your right. second. And whenever you want to take your third, you can. And if you get to where you can take a fourth, you can take it. And next weekend, I'm paying for your plane ticket and hotel and entry fee to go to the meet in Salt Lake City. <laughs> that sounds like Gus. There you go. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's Gus. That's the kind of man he is. And, now you, and you go, why in the world am I spending all my money, time, and energy to go to these meets overseas? hate to bash the USAPL ones like this, but... You know, it's frustrating to go in as a career because the truth is there's only two types of lifting, okay? There's lifting for a title, and the IPF World Championship is an honorable title to earn, okay? It's crazy. It's awesome, all right? I never got one. But uh, I got third one time, and the Russian was uh, juicy, so I didn't get to stand on the podium, and I got my medal in the mail instead, oh. you know? Um frustrating to spend all that money but uh uh the other side is it's just a way whore you know where you go to meet and you just see how much you just lift as much as you possibly can and i said <laughs> i said you know what power lift ain't going to the olympics no. man all right ain't no. gonna happen and i'm like shoot i'm gonna go just see how much weight i can lift <laughs> man and uh <laughs> and so i don't know what led me to these band shirts um, I kept thinking that, man, it sure looks like some of these guys are putting like bands or something in their shirts, you know, because the bar is just moving right. crazy fast. And so I got a hold of Mike Womack and I said, you know, hey, I want to try uh, one of these apparatuses you had. He goes, well, I've got this new shirt that I designed. And he says, it costs a little more than what you paid, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it for you. Well, you know, it, four yeah. months later, I, <laughs> Five months <after. laughs> I got this shirt. But uh, at first, I remember my spotters taking the weight out, and I'm like, 
no, 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 this is crazy. I mean, you know, first of all, they pull your hand out there and it's throbbing. You're, everything you've got pulled yep. out of that bar. And then they lift the weight out to you and you're like, no, 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 no. And I'm about ready to yell. And my assistant, he's up in my face just screaming, trust your spotters, trust your spotters. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm going to rip your butt when I get up off this thing. And uh, but, uh, they lifted it out for me and it settled. And I went, oh, oh, this feels oh. good, man. And uh, it was it, they, from there on out, now, you know, it was I got, you know, got the right. hang of it but it's a you know and i remember when i first started lifting in the band shirt i had comments online you know oh it's too simple you just put it on and lift it's not as complex as the poly shirt and i'm like going how can you say that if you've never lifted it true true you know you know i'm like you're not speaking from experience because i'm going to tell you i'm a pretty experienced lifter and it was not automatic all right. There were a lot of things I had to figure out how to make it yep. work, yep. you know? Oh, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> so, and I think you, you, think you, I got, you I said, Bill, it took you two years, you know, to figure that shirt out, the uh, band shirt. I think you told yeah. me that. Yeah. I had the same shirt that I, the same shirt I benched the 1129 in. I was missing 1050 in Same shirt. And I thought, oh, it lost, you know, it's stretched right, right. out. It's, you know, I'm, maybe I'm smaller. Uh, I had all these excuses. But that wasn't the problem. All right. The problem was we thought, like the poly shirts, uh, that if you got your hands out wider, you, were, you could touch easier or reduce the range of right. motion. Problem is, is that when those uh, band shirts, the more you bring the bar down, the more you get out of it, okay? So bringing your grip in, my, my, uh, one of my, uh, Duncan Hunley, you, he, I sent you the video. Yep. He did 925 yep. single ply, you know? Yeah. He said, Coach, I've watched your video over and over and over again. He said, you didn't have your index finger on that line. He said, you had your middle finger on the line. I said, no, I didn't. He goes, watch it. And I went, he was right. So by bringing in my hands slightly, and I mean, going into the meat, the last attempt, I just moved my hand out an eighth of an inch. That's all I did. And it just went, it just came down, boom, jumped right up there. But the grip width is crucial with these shirts. And it's not like, and the other thing is, is you can't do the belly match. The, bar, the shirt goes dead. Right. There's nothing there when you touch the belly. You've got to touch a little bit higher up just below the pecs to get the maximum push out of that. And it doesn't, it doesn't, it allows you to stay, keep your chest up because if your chest comes down and caves in, you're going to lose all that elasticity from the shirt. So. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, um, so you, you kind of touched on this too, but. Can you tell us what what was one of your least favorite powerlifting meets? <laughs> <laughs> or multiple? Several, several overseas the IPFs. I mean, darn. I mean, I remember going to Sweden, okay? Uh, my first IPF meet, my wife went with me. Uh, it got daylight at 9.30. It was in December. It got dark at 3.30. By 8.30, you thought it was midnight. <laughs> You're like, it's got to be time to go to bed, you know? Uh, and, and the hotel rooms had those little tiny single beds, you know? And uh, it was just, uh, it's just so different. The food was, uh, wasn't was what I was used to. And, uh, but I, I thought, well, you know, I'm strong. I, I'm doing well. My coach at the time that was there didn't really help us out very much. He got fired after that meet. Um, so I opened up with 727. I got it, thinking world record 761. I might as well jump up there and give it a try. I missed it twice. Turns out 733, if I had just gone up two and a half kilos, I would have been the world champion. But I ended up tying for third and losing on body weight and got fourth place. 
with a 727 <laughs> because I picked my wrong attempts because it's just, it's a different game. I tell guys, when you go to um, the IPF world, you're, don't, don't tell me you're going for records. Okay. You're going for a title. Okay. So don't be even concerned about what the record is. And the thing, um, there's a, the part of it that's tough for a lot of guys is that when you're going there and you're representing your country and the team, they may come to you, the coaches may come to you and tell you, you can't go for that way. You can't go for the win. We need the points. We need you to do this lift right here and get third place. And you're like, oh, crap, you know, especially as a heavyweight, you're one of the last guys to go. They need right. the points. So you don't get to go for the championship. So when you see guys not getting big lifts, that's part of the reason. It's because they're, they're doing it for the country, oh. not and the team. Right. You know? That makes sense. Yeah, it's a different ball game, but that's why I I, it's just, I spent so much time and energy. I was just like I admire the guys. You know, I have a buddy Jonah Leo who's a multiple time world champion, and I just admire so much of what he was able to do um, as a super heavyweight in the IPF world. Uh, my one training partner, uh, Adam Mamola, he's the most decorated American lifter in the IPF, and uh, I don't he's he's won multiple uh, medals. And I just admire what they're able to do and how they can go there and in just such adverse situations True. and put up numbers and win, you know. But it's not for me. Very, very strict judging too in the IPF and sometimes, really? sometimes, and sometimes it's you're like, wow, they're oh, like, they okay, I know that. wow, okay. Now, now they do have a jury, and what they do for sometimes so the judges have a hard time watching the lift and seeing if their butts yep. stay down. And so the jury will sometimes overrule a lift. Wow. Uh, that, yeah. That's oh, different. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's different. Hmm. So, And then uh, <laughs> uh, after my meet, my first one in Sweden, this uh, cute little girl is following me around <laughs> everywhere. Uh, my wife goes, who's the chick? Right. I says, oh, she's my spotter. I said, she goes, what do you mean? I says, well, I'm getting drug tested. And so no matter where I go, she has to go oh. with me. She goes, what if you have to go to the bathroom? I said, she's in there wow. with me. Oh, <laughs> I said, but I'm not going to go. i got to be in a cup here in a minute. But she was just like, yeah, yeah, they're pretty yeah. strict oh, wow. about it, you know? That's cool. That's yeah. different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What are some of the most impressive, memorable feats of strength that you have witnessed from other lifters for squat, bench, and or deadlift? Oh, i got to tell you. I coached Bob Sapp, oh. the beast. Yep. Okay? He was my training partner. And two times, not one time, two times, he was out on the football field. Yeah, this, someone wanted to fight him. And he reached up. He grabs his face mask, rips his face mask off his helmet, and goes, you want to fight? And every, the guy's like, well, Bob, it's cool, man. It's cool. Bob was so brutally strong. You know, it was just out of this world how strong he was. And uh, <laughs> scary. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give him a high five. He'd separate my clothes, he, he went to uh, the University of Washington, right? Yeah, he was yep, playing football right. for us. Yep. Yeah. 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 So after he was done... He stuck around and coach, uh, uh, trained with me. And, uh, oh, it was intense, really? man. He was, oh, gosh. But he was like, he'd be pushing the weight up. Don't touch it. I got it. <laughs> what was it? What, what, what were some of his so numbers, good. Bill, like uh, his bench? Uh, what, what? He, he benched in the um, mid to upper oh, fives. Right. He inclined close to four uh, 500. Yeah. Uh, one of the most impressive things I saw him do, which I couldn't do it, uh, he did a seated dumbbell clean and press for eight with a 110-pound dumbbell. Oh, Damn. wow. Well, yeah. he, he, he yeah, was like 6'2", 350, right? Like He was like 6'4", okay. something like that. Yeah, monster. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. He was gigantic, so brutally oh. strong. It was incredible. But, uh, yeah, he all his lifts were just astronomical, just Country boy. Do you strong, still stay in man. touch with him at all with social media? No, I haven't touched this side since I left okay. Seattle. I'm not. But but you know you know you know we you especially around uh, 
the, the college football players at the uh, like at, when I was at Washington, there were guys doing lifts that just it was just a joke to them, you know. You just they were just so casual. Or we had one guy linebacker who Jaime Fields, he passed, he's passed away, he was in a car accident, but um, he he casually squatted like six eighty five, and I told him that was not low enough. I was being a jerk, and he went fine. Boom, did it again. Signed my sheet. You know, and it was just no belt, no warm up. He didn't warm up. He just put it on there. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But he ran a he, he ran a way two uh, fifty five. Ran a four three nine four. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's these, an athlete right these there. These guys, man. Yeah, you know these guys are just they're elite athletes. That are just super right. powerful. That it's amazing to be around them. Bet. You know, yeah. Okay. Very cool. Um, what injuries, if any, have you had to deal with throughout your career, and how did you recover from those? You know what? I've never had an upper body surgery uh, at all. Um, I do have a giant bone spur in this right shoulder. It's huge. It's like two inches wow. wide, three inches mm -hmm. long. Uh, I can't lift my right arm over my head, um, but um, it don't hurt. Uh, just, it's just what it is. They told me if they remove it, uh, uh, my shoulder would never be the same. They'd have to replace okay. my shoulder. And I'm like, no. nah, I'm not doing good. I'm doing fine. Um, but uh, I did have a, a, a couple pec tears. Well, I think they were pec tears. One, one last June, um, I was wearing a different bench shirt, and um, man, my, I, <laughs> I was uh, I was walking through Walmart with my wife the day afterward, and my arm felt swollen. Okay, wow. and this lady stopped me. And she says, "Do you have a permit to carry those guns in this store?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Ma'am, you just made my wife my my life miserable with her. She's gonna give me a hard time." But what it was was my arm was swelling up, and uh, it turned black and blue. My chest, um, but I never missed a workout. It didn't right. hurt, uh, but it just turned black and blue. I don't know where it ever happened to it. Um, it took me a while because of the swelling to get back in the shirt because I couldn't get I couldn't get my arm. It would just be it was so swollen that it wasn't even. Wow. You know, yeah. I couldn't I couldn't bench the bar either. So, but uh, I've had. Uh, for an uh, IT band last May, uh, benching. Wow! Wow! Uh, yeah, using an inferior bar. Uh, that's the thing we're finding that once you go over a thousand, uh, the bar is crucial. And fortunately, you know, I work for Sorenex Equipment Company, and that's where I'm at. I'm at the hotel right now. We're having right. a conference, okay. uh, so that's why I'm at a hotel. And um, they uh, they had in the museum a bar that came from the original West side in California. Whoa. And they said, Bill, we can't give this to you, but you can use it till you can find a good, we can get you a good bar. And it's phenomenal. It don't bend. It's, it's, it's just a DeMarco bar, but I don't know. Anyway. So, uh, fortunately I have that. Uh, I keep it with me everywhere I go. I don't right. leave it anywhere. Uh, because I gave the owner, um, my right. word that I would bring it back to him. So, uh, but I know that uh, Rob Farrell has uh, ordered like 150 bars from uh, Finland, and I want to get, I want one of them too. You know, because it's a 25 kilo bar. It looks like it's, it looks like what we're looking for for the big right. bench presses. You know, so I mean, every other every other company we talk to, there's another company that. I won't say their name because I really like right. their equipment. Uh, but uh, the inside collar, they make it so that it's about two, three inches long, which causes the weight to be further out. Then that causes the more whip right, in the bar. Right. And you've got to make that thing about shoot, fourth of an inch so that you can move all the weight even closer to the center of the mass so the bar doesn't move. Oh, ah, yeah. Okay. And, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So what we do, we go, we, and when we test the bar, we'll load it up to about 900 pounds and then take the end of the bar and just pump on it. And if it bounces up and down, I ain't venture with it. So, 
Uh, just wow. that's it's crucial. It's going to it saves a ton of in, in, in injuries because you're wasting the stabilization strength. It's going into the bar because the bar's not stable. Will uh, Rob Farrell's bars be uh, what you're looking for then? I okay. think so. From the best okay. I can tell, it looks like they're going. So that's why I'm, I'm telling you, you and I guess the whole everybody out there. Uh, there's only going to be 150, and hopefully, uh, we're I can get one of them. You know. So. Any idea on price on those seven eight hundred dollars? No, I have, no, I have okay. no idea. But you know, the, you know, good bar is going to be close. That's to right. That's right. Yep. Know? No question. You know? But it, think about think of the medical bills. That's that true. Saying, you know? And you'll have it forever. You know, you take <laughs> care of it, you have it forever. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Ashley. What do you got? Okay. Um, what are some of your best training lifts? It can be max singles, but it doesn't have to be. It can be sets of multiple reps. Just some of your mm. best training feats of strength. Mm. I did 1107 in a workout last uh, fall, uh, a year ago, last fall. It just, it looked like that 1129. But the 1129 is actually the most weight I've ever had in my hand. Wow. I never... I never go heavier than uh, than the weight down. And part of it is because of my age. Right. Uh, the compression in my joints is just right. brutal, all right? and it takes me a, quite a while to get over it. So I can't handle. Oh, I, I wanted. I've always wanted to do overloading, but I can't. Um, one of the little tricks I will share with you that I do is I use boards for a long time. Okay. But then you get a dependence on that hard yes. surface. Mm -hmm. okay? And I, I, I tried going without no boards, and I didn't like it because I, I still wanted to know what my range of motion was. So what I did is I came up with um, foam. And I used foam, and I like two inch, one inch, one half inch, and I'll block it. Like, so, so like a two board is really uh, uh, three inches. Right. Okay. So I put a three-inch uh, piece of foam. That's what I used for my first warm-up with 945. Okay. And so when I bring it down, I can't feel it. I, I'm thinking, oh, I didn't even touch it. Boom, I pushed the weight up, and they went, oh, Coach, you were down in three-quarters of an inch into, into the foam. I'm like, oh, wow, good. Yeah. So, yeah, so you, it, doesn't, it doesn't affect your uh, motor pattern. It doesn't affect your uh, uh, feeling the weight. And when you get in the meat, it feels right. the same thing. So that's one of the little tricks I've uh, come up with recently is uh, use the foam. That's a good idea. Yeah, we used to do carpet presses back in the day. We had a piece of carpet we'd roll up, and, and the weight would transfer through the, the rolled-up carpet on your chest and kind of transfer into your body, uh, similar to a foam press, I guess, a little bit. But so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I know you kind of told us a little bit about this already. I know you, you bench three times a week, but what does a week of training look like for you? Okay. Um, I will tell you this. When I start back training, and I tell people this all the time, five by five is better than 98%. I'm just saying roughly, but 98% of all programs that are out there. A five by five will change you who you are. See, there's two types of strength training. There's strength training to develop strength potential, and then there's strength training to exhibit maximum strength. And when you start your training cycle, you don't have a base yet. So I've just, I'll spend like three weeks on nothing but five by five. I'll go, and Wednesday's gonna be my light five by five day. Usually around 75% is the average weight. So it, it, may, it may at the first, may go up to 78%, but then towards the end when my uh, weights start getting heavier on Monday and Friday, it'll drop down to like 73 to 72%. So uh, to allow the, the total amount of in intensity because you got to look at look at the week and what you got. You got a 100%, $100, okay? You can't go heavy on everything at the same time because something's going to give. Okay? You can't do it. It's like, that's why when people ask me about the raw bench, if I back down the raw bench pressing, I'll do better in the shirt because I'll have That's more right. energy to be in, in the shirt. But people go and insist I got to develop this raw bench. I'm like, no, I don't. You know, my raw bench is roughly between 575 and 600. 
okay? Just roughly. And I don't really work it, to develop it, and exhibit it. But um, if when I train in the shirt, I'll be training with a max around 460. That's how much I drop it because I just, it's all about that tempo of you know, imitating what I do right. with the shirt. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring the bar down, uh, touch real soft. Same thing as I'm going to do in a meal, you know, with the shirt on. Okay. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, no, totally, totally. All right. Um, just a couple, couple just silly random questions that Ryan always throws in. What does, I'm sorry, do you use pre-workout? If so, what, which one do you prefer? Kind of a silly random. I yeah. Coffee, everything? No. No, I use I've used the same pre-workout for forty years. Okay. Wow. Cedar and aspirin. Enough said. Seriously. That's simple. I went um, to the national championships in track and field. My let's see indoor. My fourth year. I did five years. So my second to last year. And uh, when you qualify, I qualified. Barely in the last meet, the last qualifier meet, I, I just barely made it. But if you qualify, they'll allow you to do another event. So I told my coach, I want to do the 35-pound weight throw. He goes, you're not very good at it. And I was like, hey, I don't care. I just want to compete. You know, I don't care if I get embarrassed. I just want to compete. So I'm reading this exercise physiology book, okay? And it's talking about using caffeine and ephedrine. Yeah. Well, nobody would even tell me what ephedrine was. I didn't know. No clue what that was. But I knew what caffeine was. So I go to the national championships, and I decide I'm going to take half a no-dose. I throw 50% further than I've ever threw in my life, and I miss All-American by eight inches. All right? I'm like, oh, my gosh. Where's this stuff been all my life? So then later in the day is the shot put. Now, I remember, I barely qualified. I take a whole no those, man. I'm like, if half did that good, whole one's going to do yeah. better. And I'm winning the national championships in the shot put until the second to last throw when a brother of an Olympian beat me. But I was like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, so, you know, that's my life. It's almost, yeah. you know. Uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> I'm all, I, mean, I could tell you so many stories where I almost was national <laughs> champion. Almost set the world record. But, uh, <laughs> but, but uh, uh, I, I, that's when I went, oh, this caffeine, this changed my life, you know? So uh, I, I got into uh, Excedrin aspirin. Uh, it kills the pain, um, and it, I get the caffeine out of it, and it's convenient to carry. But that's all I, 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 it's all I take, three or four. That's yeah, it. I remember somebody a long time ago said that. caffeine, ephedrine, and aspirin is the most uh, potent fat burner and um, uh, stimulant also uh, when you combine all those yeah. together. Yeah, yeah. It was great when we used to be able to get caffeine. Uh, really ephedrine, yeah. Fe yeah. yeah. Those days are gone. Those days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Miss that. Okay. I remember I had a, a – I was blocking up with the creatine, yep. you mm -hmm. know, and the doctor came in the office and he says uh, – well, Mr. Gillespie, I need to know everything that you're taking. He said, told the nurse to get out. And I'm like, okay. So I said, well, I'm going to start with the one thing that I think he's going to. I said, I take uh, 25 milligrams of ephedrine every week. He goes, huh, okay. And I went, you know, and I took uh, caffeine with et cetera. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I said, I know, and I take uh, creatine. Oh, yeah. my gosh, creatine. And I'm like, whoa, dude. Jumps out of his chair, probably. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. So. I'm like, oh my gosh! I didn't, you know, I didn't expect that right. reaction. But uh, yeah, it was. Uh, he he said you got to come off that stuff immediately. It turns out I have a very very rare uh, uh, thing that like one in a million. Where my that that part of that creatine that doesn't dissolve stores in my oh. kidneys, and then I they shut down. That's scary. And when they shut down, boom! And the last time I was driving to the University of Washington, came around, came into stop and go traffic. I got about five second warning, knowing it was going to happen, and I just decided to put both feet on the brake and hope that when I blacked out, it was going to stop the car and keep me in position. Wow, Bill! And that's what happened. I wow. came to, and I'm like, "What am I doing here?" 
And uh, oh wow, that's scary shit. Yeah, there. yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, thought my, you know, and I'm benching that six thirty nine. Everybody told me you, hey, you'll never bench anymore. You should just quit. <laughs> but, yeah, listen to them. And, 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 and my little tiny grandmother takes me aside, and she just chewed my butt out. Don't you dare quit. This is who you've always been. You've always wanted to be strong. You better keep going. I like grandma. <laughs> I like grandma. Good for her. Good for her. I'm like, you go, grandma. Yeah, for real. Good job, grandma. <laughs> I like it. Um, what type of music do you listen to during your training? Is that something that's pretty important uh, to you? You know what? It's not that important to me. Um, uh, I really... I, I, I know I get criticized for this all the time. I do uh, September by Earth, Wind, and Fire. That is my walk-up song. And people go, why? And I'm like, I don't know. I just picked it, you know? Uh, if that's what does it yeah, for you, man. That's what does it. I don't even hear it. I don't care about it. I'll, um, I, I'm a big believer in um, uh, uh, controlling my arousal okay. level. Okay? All right? People see me lift. I've heard Gus was it. Come on, Bill, wake up. Let's get going. And I'm like, dude, you have no idea. All right? The rage that's inside. But if you allow that energy to come out, it's not going to get applied to right. that bench press. Once again, it's all about energy consumption. So I take all that emotional energy and I hold it in. And I act like it's as casual as can be. But the fact of the matter is, through the discipline of the workouts the year after year day after day i developed the ability to just turn it on and i've had it tested and they said they said that my uh that my ability to focus because of the years of lifting heavy weights is beyond world class they've never had anybody test as high as mine. wow i did i'm like it was like no big you know they're like you you have no fear and i'm like i'm just sitting here saying yes or no to questions <laughs> i'm like what <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see fear. Wait till I go walk downstairs. I got to go a little bit far in my hands. <laughs> but they said that that's why. Was, you know, there's outliers. You know, we all see the physical, all right? But there's other things that are occurring within our minds, our our our, our strengths, and that that the changing us from being like everybody else. And it, when you can get it tapped into that and understand that, then you're going to be a stronger individual, right. not not just physically, but as an individual. You're going to understand why is it that I could go through turmoil and, and hardship and I can bounce right back and act like people like, well, you don't even care. Why don't you care? And I'm like, it's behind me. I'm moving on. And they're like, how can you do that? And I'm like, I don't know, just because I've through the discipline of all the hard work that we do. So pe people need to know that we're not just wasting our time getting big and strong. They're, we're getting mentally strong, yeah. too. And you got to take use that in other aspects of that's your true. life. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, you got to have it here, that's for sure. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Great answer. Um, let's see here. What is the best advice lifting wise anyone has ever gave you, and who was that person? Mm, my mentor Dave Williams. Um, he was the head strength coach at Liberty, and he wrote uh, an article for the uh, National Strength and Conditioning Association uh, about bench pressing, and uh, he taught me so much about uh, uh, training the bench press and building a base of knowledge that allowed me to grow from there to where I'm at now. And he was always, he till this day, he was has always been my biggest cheerleader. Just always encouraging me, believing in me. Uh, he came to me, he's the one who came to me when I did the uh, uh, six dips with five, uh, five 45 pound plates. I said, you gotta figure out how to transfer it. I said, and I'm like, well, let's do it. Let's figure out a technique to make it work. Yeah, how to so, channel it, yeah. He, he, yeah, huge, huge okay. impact, impact on my life. Not only in lifting, but in my life. Uh, you know, he told me to, that uh, when we had children, he said, you're not going to get to spend time with them because you're going to be working so much. So at night, when the babies need to get fed, that's your time to feed them. And my wife's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she 
she was all for it. <laughs> she liked that, huh? <laughs> but you know, and I was hating it. But you know what? You know what? I, I holding my little baby. That was my time then to build that bond with That's that right. child. You know, and uh, it was great advice. You know, and he just he helped me as a, a husband and a father. Also, that's you know, cool. wow, kind of a great mentor, yeah, yeah, that's, wow. that's yeah. Cool. Do you yeah. still stay in touch with him? Is he still around? Yes, he's uh got early oh. dementia, he's got a lot of pain, but uh, we'll get together and I'll pick him up and we'll oh, go out cool. for lunch. And that's oh, cool. yeah, 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 do we still talk about training? And you go, you get him going, and boy, I'll tell you <laughs> what, genius, genius <laughs> as far as his knowledge. That's awesome, oh. that's awesome. Um. What powerlifting gear do you use? Well, you know what? I was a, a, at first an Inzer guy. And then uh, when Tiny and I were trying to be the first guy to bench 800 in a single ply shirt, I went to that meet that Gus flew me to at Salt Lake City. And uh, the first day, I ripped out every shirt I had. So the way Gus works it, if you enter two divisions, and you bomb, you can bomb in one of the divisions and come back the right. next day and lift okay. again. And I've always done better the second day. So I call up Inzer and I said, hey, uh, all my shirts ripped out. Can you get me a shirt to the hotel by tomorrow morning? And I want to try the Rage X. And they told me the Rage X is too advanced for mm -hmm. you. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I just wanted to say, is that because that's what you want Tiny yeah. to wear? Is time to lose their guy, you know, and I understood. So I'm like, okay, never mind. So I called uh, uh, Titan, Pete, with Titan. I said, Pete, here's my problem. He had me three shirts waiting for me the next day. I ended up doing uh, 782 Damn. that day. Nice. So uh, brand new shirt. So uh, I, I was a I was a Titan guy forever, and then uh, then I just decided, you know what? I make plenty of money. Uh, I got a great job. I'll tell you about that in just a second. Awesome. But, uh, and I'd rather just be able to buy my own gear and then I can buy whatever I yeah, want. Sure. You know, I don't, I'm not limited. You know, if I, back when uh, these shirts came out and Titan didn't have any, you know, association with Rob Perel at the time, you know, everybody's like, they, they were Titan guys were bashing the shirt, you know, but now all of a sudden they don't, right. you know, <laughs> things change. But, uh, my job, I work for Sarnex, and I got the greatest job in the whole wide world, okay? Um, they, they say I'm a strength coach. Uh, but what I do is they give me a truck, they give me a credit card, and wherever I want to go visit, whenever I want to go visit, I go to college and NFL strength coaches, hang out with them for the day, take them out for lunch, and I don't sell them nothing, okay? I just, whatever they want to talk about. Uh, they want to talk about training? Good. Want to talk about the career? Good. Want to talk about family? Good. Uh, whatever you want to talk about. And I spend the day with them, and then I go to visit another school. And uh, it's, it's the greatest that job. That is the greatest job, Bill. That sounds really cool. <laughs> that sounds yeah. great. What, what, so, what current uh, NFL locker rooms teams have you been to uh, recently? Uh, recently, I've been to the uh, Panthers. Panthers, Carolina Panthers, uh, the um uh, Eagles invited okay. me up, went and spent some time with them, and then uh, 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 Detroit Lions and the uh, Cleveland Browns. Wow, Brown. Bill. So, yeah, yeah. So, you know, and with COVID, it's really been difficult, you know, because they have to be so careful about who they right. invite in or work, you know. And so, you know, and, and that's why I, I, you know, whether I like to or not, I got all the shots because that allows right. me have that to where I can get in right. and see these guys. Same thing with, like I went to Clemson to visit with them. I was there for 11 and a half hours. Oh. Just just the whole day. And I had a ball, man. They were great guys, man. Uh, just they had questions after questions. Uh, went to Coastal Carolina. I thought, hey, I'm going to go to Coastal, stay at Myrtle Beach. I'm going to do some fishing. Right. You know, I got to go fishing one oh. time. Uh <laughs> They wanted me to do a seminar, and I spent four and a half hours uh, doing the right. seminar. You know, it's just, just having a ball. You know, they're great guys, man. And so I just, I've not had a visit where it wasn't a good nice, visit yet. Bill. They just they open the door. They know that I'm not coming in there to take their job. I'm not trying to sell them right. anything. 
just having fun, you know, meeting wow. people. So, I'm jealous. Yeah. That sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, people ask me if I want to go back into coaching. I'm like, why would I want to, you know? I mean, I'm planning a trip. Uh, I'm going to try planning a trip out to Seattle because uh, uh, the Seahawks have a store next year. Uh, the University of Washington new strength coach Ronald McKeefrey, uh is getting some spar next year. So there's some teams out there that already have it. So it'd be a chance for me to follow up. And, and uh, I know Ron already. And we did a podcast with him. So you know, it'd be a, a great opportunity to go catch up and spend some time with these guys, and then get to see my mom. You know, I oh wow, seen three years. Oh wow, okay. so, yeah, yeah. All right, that sounds like. And see all the friends. See all, you know. Uh, so, you know, Phil O'Royal, you know, and all those guys, you know? Nice. Yeah, you, you, have, awesome, you, you have been yeah. to Washington for three years? No, no. My brother passed away three oh. years ago. He had cancer, and I had to go say goodbye. Oh, sorry to hear that. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So, it's pretty brutal. Yeah, so, um, Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, but it's really, his daughter reminded me. She goes, I'm so happy my dad got to watch you do your big lift. And I'm like, That's oh, cool. yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. So. Okay. Can you tell us about your strength coaching career and how you ended up as the uh, strength coach for the Seattle Seahawks and and maybe tell us a little bit about what that was like? Yes. Um, I started out at Liberty, okay. all right, and um, I was actually a track and field coach, and uh, it moved into where I had an option of either uh, uh, University of Georgia asked me if I'd be interested in being uh, the track coach. Uh, and I did not like working with distance runners, okay? Uh, something about their mentality is a little different than mine. Uh, but uh, <laughs> so I, uh, I went to the president, the founder of the university, and I told him, I said, listen, I got three choices. I could go to the University of Georgia interview to be the head track coach. I could stay here at Liberty, be the track coach. Or I said, I'd like to go and be the assistant strength coach under my mentor. And he goes, fine, you'll start tomorrow. Wow. And so, nice. uh, yeah. So he loved me. Um, and so we had a kid from uh, Virginia that was one of the captains for the University of Washington that would come and train with us for the summer, uh, Donald Jones. And he broke all those records at the University of Washington. So when the job opened up, they said, Hey, the guy that helped me break all these records would like to go and interview for the job. So uh, Don James was the head football coach. And uh, for those people who don't know, Don James was the mentor to a couple good football coaches named uh, uh, Nick Saban and uh, Urban Meyer. You know? So uh, he, to be able to work underneath him, uh, I'll tell you a, a story. Uh, we, when we had a home game, all the coaches and players stay in a hotel, okay? Or we, we'd say, at that time, where they were staying in Bellevue, okay? So uh, everybody gets on the bus, and they travel to the, to the home game. So on Monday, we have this staff meeting. Coach James says, my reading light didn't work on the bus. I'm like, okay. Oh, so what? And... Uh, the director of football operations says, Coach, we'll look right into it. He goes, no, fire the bus company. He goes, if my reading light won't work, how do I know the bus is being checked over? How do I know it's not going to break down? How do I know my football team's not going to make it? And how do I know we're going to win the game if I can't get my football team there? Fire that bus company. Find me a bus company that will make sure that everything's taken care of. You know, and that message wasn't for the bus company. That message was for every coach in that room. Everybody buttholes just went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But his his philosophy was that we're going to beat you because you're going to make more mistakes than we will. And when you make a mistake, we're going to beat you on it. And uh, so we, you know, you learn how to coach and learn attention to detail. It was a great uh, working with him. And so then I stayed and worked with uh, Jim Lambright. And then when Rick uh, Neuheisel came in, uh, he moved me up to be the head strength coach. All right? So uh, I won't go into detail what happened, but <laughs> okay, oh, I God, will. I was going to say, go uh, for it, man, if you want, if you're comfortable <laughs> with it. Like. Yeah. Um, 
we won 28 games when I was the head strength coach at Washington. 23 of them. Fourth quarter come from behind wins. Yeah. All right. We were renowned for it. Okay. And uh, one of the football coaches told me this story. Okay. But he said uh, they were in a staff meeting and uh, Rick Neuheisel says, we win in the fourth quarter because of me, not Bill Gillespie. And the coaches are like, coach, does it really matter? We're winning in the fourth quarter. You know, we win all these games. It doesn't matter. He goes, yeah, it matters. He goes, I'm the reason why. And I'll prove it. And he goes, the coaches are like, how are you going to prove it? He goes, I'll fire him. And they said, coach, is that really a smart thing to do? And he goes, I'll prove it to you. I'm the guy. So he fired me. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So next game. We played, they played, they played uh, Michigan. It was the fourth quarter, seconds left in the game. The ball, uh, Michigan has the ball. They're out of field goal range. New Heisel calls timeout, sends the defense back out on the field with 12 players. Flag gets thrown. Ball moves up five yards. Ball gets kicked in for a field goal, and they lose the game. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so... Yeah, it was pretty sweet. That was, yeah. yeah. Uh, Makes sense. Yeah. So uh, when they let me go, um, the Seahawks picked me up. Nice. All right? Yeah. And it was, oh, gosh. The general manager, who I was told I would never, ever get to talk to the general manager. I would never get to talk to the president. It turned out I got, they became, I became really close with them. And uh, the general manager, uh, Bob Ferguson, um, calls me in his office the very first day. And he says, uh, Washington's pro day is this uh, Friday. And I want you to go down to the equipment room, and I want you to get the nicest Seahawk gear we've got. And he says, and then I want you to come meet me, and you're going to ride to the pro day with me. And I says, okay. As I said, because, you know, I know the players. I can give you all the insight. He goes, blankety blank, no. He goes, we're going to go over there, and we're going to tell them how stupid they were for letting you go. He goes, I played at the University of Washington. I know what was going on, and that's the stupidest thing i ever seen, letting you go. And I'll tell you, I I didn't expect him to say anything, but the defensive coordinator come up to me, and he goes, what are you doing here? And he turned around and says, are you one of the idiots that let this guy go? What were you thinking? And I'm like, oh, my God. Gosh, this is incredible. Yeah. But I, you know, the, the man had instant loyalty forever, you know. I'd do anything for Bob Ferguson. I loved him, you know. Uh, whatever he wanted, I was going to do it for him because, man, he, he he made me look like a hero, yeah. you know. And so, uh, uh, and, and then uh, Bob Woodson was the president. And uh, I'd spent tons of time with those guys. But turned out, Coach Holmgren and those two didn't get along real well. <laughs> And uh, I had a, they looked like I had an alliance with him. Those were the two guys. And the whole program that was like, uh, you know, I don't know if Bill's on my side or not. So it, it, kind of bit, it kind of bit me in the butt a little bit, but it all worked out fine. But the Seahawks situation was, um, it was incredible to be around those elite athletes, okay? Um, I, I'll let you in on a little secret about the NFL player. Uh, and NFL players... We all think it's just because they're very talented, and they right. are, okay? Right. But they are the most competitive individuals you've ever been around. They are like a dog that was bred to hunt, okay? The dog has to hunt, okay? Has to. They're gonna, that dog's got to find something to hunt, all right? These guys love to compete. And there wasn't a day that went by in that weight room where two hundred dollars wasn't bet on something. I bet you two hundred dollars you can't do that. And then, really? <laughs> oh yeah, here we go. You know, uh, I, I remember the wide receivers. We told them they had to do thirty pull-ups, and I, they said, you know, three sets of ten, six sets of five, however you want to do them, but you got to do thirty pull-ups. They said, can we do them together in unison? We're like, what? Yeah, we'll go do them together in unison. We'll all do them at one time. And so one guy would yell up, and they'd all get to the top, and then he'd go down, and someone else would yell one. And they did 30 pull-ups in a row like that. And I'm like, damn. I told my wife, 
gosh. I said, you guys, I didn't know you were so good at pull-ups. And they looked at me like this disgusted look. It's just pull-ups. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> <laughs> you guys are freaks, man. Uh, but, you know, you just, you, we went bowling. And I thought, I bowled 160. You know, I'm not great, but I, I'm respectable. They came out, and our punter is bowling strikes one after another from behind the back and between his what? legs. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I thought I was like getting punked on one of those video things. I'm like, there's no freaking way this is going on. And he's there all just laughing. Oh. But you realize real fast, these suckers are talented athletes. And they asked me, you want to go uh, golf tomorrow? I'm like, hey, no. I'm like, there's no way I'm going to golf. I said, I thought I could bowl respectfully. I said, man, you guys are throttling me, man. But they they are, uh, you know, everyone who told me, oh, it's going to be horrible to work with them. They're not going to have egos right. and stuff. It's not true at really? all. At all. No, they're very down to earth. They, they don't tell their kids they're going to practice. They tell their kids, daddy's going to work. It's their job. Okay. And so they... Um, they just come in and do whatever you tell them to do. That's awesome. You just it's they're so cooperative, but you don't really train them to get as strong as they could be because most of the time you're training them just to get over the right. season. Right. So any type of strength gains they make actually occurs during the season, which obviously you have to protect right. the player. And it's got to be very very careful. But uh, and, you know, and, and like they can do stuff that like I had a player. I wanted to put him on a velocity-based program, uh, but he could contract so fast that he got injured. Oh. He was so violent. And I'm like, so I had to slow the bar down. She said, she said when you go, if you're powerful enough, uh, a, a, a velocity-based workout is no, no different than a heavy workout. And if you're not prepared to handle a heavy workout, you know what happens. Well, same thing's true if you're a powerful athlete like these guys are, which is something I had to learn the hard way. Uh, but they're great guys, man. They're pr they can they can read an individual within five minutes. They can tell you more about yourself than you want really? to know. Uh, I don't know how they do it, but they it's how they are. Um, but they're 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 really it's fun to work with now. The other side is you don't get to develop. You didn't get. I didn't get to develop but maybe four guys that were on the practice squad. So that was boring to me. You know, uh, I wanted to develop players, right. and so uh, uh, my second year at uh, Seattle, uh, the founder of Liberty heard I was in town, called me in his office, and basically made me a deal offer that I couldn't refuse. Yeah. Okay, whatever I want to get paid, I'll pay. You. Uh, whatever you want, I'll do it. With a lifetime guaranteed contract, no coach is ever going to fire you. Well, that lifetime guarantee was be probably based on his lifetime and not mine because when they brought in Hugh Freeze and we got the team to Liberty to FBS, he fired oh. everybody. Uh, yeah, and then Liberty announced that they called me, a, that I was retiring and gave me two months severance after 14 oh, years. Wow. So. Yeah, it was pretty hard. It was really emotionally hard on me. But now, look, I got a great job. I wouldn't want to go back. I don't right. want to go back there. I wouldn't want to coach there. Uh, I love what I do. And uh, I had the, not only the freedom, but the encouragement to bench heavy. Nice. That's awesome. You know? So you know, now, now I'm going to go explore new areas of my life and see what I can do, you know? Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. What is something about you that would surprise everyone? Mm. <laughs> that's a tough one, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, I'm shy. Okay. In, in, in some situations, I don't like, I'm very poor in uh, like social situations where. Um, we're in a group getting to, you know, get together and people are just whining, dining and stuff. I, I can't, I have a very difficult time carrying a conversation. Same with me, Bill. Yeah, Same. Yeah. 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 And then, you know, the tendency is you get nervous and then you start talking about yep. yourself and everybody's oh. oh, 
oh, all he wants to yeah. do is talk about himself. No, I really don't. I just don't know how to get you to talk to me about what your That's life right, is like. Right. You know? Okay. You know? Okay. Yeah, that is surprising because you, I mean, you just seem so You seem like outgoing and, and, and yeah, con- so con- yeah, just, I, I don't see it in you. Well but, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. there. All right. Um, if you had an opportunity to go back and do it all over again, would you change anything? If so, what would it be? Mm. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't have wasted my time in the IPL. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I felt like I wasted too many good years. Um, I wish that uh, I would have been able to enter more meets back in when I was in my 30s because I was really, really, really strong, but I was only allowed to do like one meet a year, two meets a year, uh, just because of work, uh, because yep. of coaching. Uh, um, I don't know if I would regret it or not, but I got invited to go to the World's Strongest Man uh one time before there's a qualifier for it and uh my boss it was the uh, would have been during the spring break but i needed to miss one friday and my boss wouldn't let me have a day off and uh i would have enjoyed just meeting you know like magnus for magnuson was the guy at that time you know uh i wouldn't have won but it would have been just cool to get to go meet them and compete and just say I did it, you know? For sure, cool you know? So, but who knows? You might have got hurt. Yeah, right. Possibly. Ruined a bench career, you know? So. Okay. Okay. Outside of powerlifting, what are some of your hobbies and things you like to do? <laughs> I love the fish. Ah. Nice. I love it. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I'm retired because I went I, would, I love to hunt, okay? And we have a zillion deer in uh, yes, Virginia, okay? And you can shoot two a Whoa. day all the way up until April 1st. It's still wow. cold. Wow. All right? Yeah. They just got to they gotta get rid of them. And so uh, I there's so many times I won't shoot one because I'm thinking I don't want to drag that thing out because it's going to make me tired. It's going to hurt my back. Or I don't want to get up early because it's going to mess up my workout for the next <laughs> right. day. Yep. Uh, you know, all these things, you know. And I'm like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to start doing, you know, there's a, uh, an hour and a half from my house is uh, where the world record blue uh, catfish was caught. And it was 143 pounds. Uh, last week, they had a, a, the largest catfish tournament in America. And the winner caught 112 and a half pounds. Is catfish. that a blue cat? So, yeah, blue cats, monsters. And so I got an eighteen foot John boat, seventeen rod holders, uh, more than seventeen <laughs> rods to put in there, uh, sixty five horse jet motor on it, this Yamaha brand new, and uh, it's all set up to fish wherever I want. That's to. awesome, Bill. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I miss fishing in Washington yep. for the uh, yep. Kings and you know Steelhead, uh, but. Uh, you know, we got a lot of striper out here. Uh, they're a lot of fun to catch. And uh, the deer hunt's yeah. pretty good, too. So, uh, you know, I, I, I want to I get back. I do a lot, but I really want to. I've always, I want to shoot a really big buck. In fact, uh, because of the bench, uh, I got invited to go on a, a wild boar hunt with Doug Smitty, the guy that works out with uh, Muzz's gym that helped me out. Um and we're going on a wild boar hunt on February 18th. Nice. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And they're good. They're good eating, so, too. Uh, yeah. Yes, they are. So I'm looking for – I've never even seen a wild boar in the yeah. woods, you know. But I'm hoping to lay a few yep, down, you know. Nice. <laughs> so, you know, that's what uh, – one of the guys I coach uh, owns a knife company. On his board of directors is the guy who started the Outdoor Network. So they are connected with, you know, I've got to hang out with Hank Parker for four hours, uh, all these different uh, stars on uh, um, these hunting and fishing wow. shows. So I'm hoping now that, you know, I set the record that maybe they might want to go and have me on their show. Yeah, you know? yeah totally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So, all right. That's really cool. Yeah. Very nice. So that's why I'm trying to trim up. I've already lost 20 pounds. Oh, wow. But I'm trying to trim up. And make myself look marketable, you know, because yeah. 
so I got I got a, a company uh, that's flying out a film crew from LA. They're going to do a, a mini documentary. Awesome, on, Bill. On, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to look. I want to look the, the part. You know, yeah. look the part. You know, and people don't know the difference. You know that. You know, I know. I know what I got to look like. You know, people say, "Are you in shape for the bench press?" I'm like, "Yeah, rounds of shape." <laughs> it <laughs> is. <too. laughs> it's true. <laughs> Love it. Love it. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, you sound like you're off to a great start. Already lost 20 pounds. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. Um, when you first started out, what lifters did you look up to? Oh gosh. You know, let me see. Uh, Mike Bridges. Yeah. In fact, I got to hang out with Mike several times at the National Strength Coaches Conference mm-hmm. and got to quiz him about all right, listen, when you, like he, he did something really unusual on his warm ups for his bench. He would take his third warm up and do it for three sets of three. And I said, I said, do you really do that? And he goes, yes. And I, what I do is if I go into a workout and I just feel like crap, and I'm like, I don't feel good, I'll do sets of three on my third warm up over and over and over and over until I feel good. And I've had spectacular workouts afterwards. So I won't go until I feel oh. good, and so uh, sometimes it's five, six sets. Oh wow, they that's a Mike, Brid- Mike Bridges but, uh, technique, huh? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, Larry Pacifico was you know awesome. Uh, Paul Wren, I got the opportunity to work out with Paul Wren after he won his uh, first IPF World Championship, Whoa. and uh, in his hometown, and we went to work out with him, and it was his first workout. So. Uh, Whatever we would do, he would do it for two. So, you know, we finished up with the deadlift, and I pulled 600. And I thought, well, I'm going to see a grimace, you know, or something, you know. He pulled that weight so fast that my jaw fell open, and I went, could you clean that? Yeah. (laughs) You know, those Russians are cleaning almost that much weight. And I thought that was, you know, impossible. But after watching him pull it, I went, yeah, yeah, they could, yeah. I could see it happening. Wow. It was so powerful. Awesome. Those are those are names of uh, uh, you don't hear very much anymore. The, 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 yeah, John Gamble. Gamble. You remember the name? Yeah, John Gamble competed in the world's strongest man. He was from the University of Virginia. Uh, massive. He uh, was a, a Olympic, he qualified for Olympic trials in the discus also, and uh, he would judge the shot in discus at the track meets that we do at University of Virginia. So we're all there warming up, John running around. He'd walk out on the track. Everybody on the track would stop, turn, and stare. Like, oh, my gosh, it moves. He was mammoth. He was so huge, so well-built. And I was like, oh, I always wanted to be built like him. You know? so, yeah, so okay. those are some of those early, you know, early guys that I – really looked up to and after a while you know ed Cohn. oh yeah you know? uh yeah what a great, great guy i mean you know yeah you know uh when my brother passed away uh he contacted me consulted me found out that his mother had passed away two days before that oh, wow and here he was he was never mentioned it he was concerned about me and what i was going through and i said that's why you oh, are to go right. that's right yes Incredible man, incredible man. And you know that's what I found in you know in the NFL. You know, I got to coach Jerry Rice this last year. In fact, in fact, uh, my we weren't supposed to ask for autograph, but I knew it was going to be my yeah. last day. So I go to the equipment room and I said, "Hey, uh, is there any chance I get a game ball from yesterday's game?" Yeah, Bill, since it's your last game, sure. They hand me a game ball. So I marched it in the weight room when Jerry was in the office. I said, "Jerry." Would you sign this oh, ball shit. for me? Sure. So he signed it, got a picture Whoa. with him. And to the best of my knowledge, I have the only known autograph ball from Jerry Rice's last NFL oh, game. Wow, wow oh, Bill. That's special. Holy crap. Yeah. That is yeah. awesome. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. It's on a safe, locked up. In I hope so. Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Wow. You take care of that thing. Yeah. But uh, you know what? The thing about Jerry, he was such a class act. Right, such a gentleman, and you you saw some of these rookies acting all cocky and 
thinking they were better than everybody else. And I'm like, dude, stop. There's a legend right there. That guy's going to be wearing the gold jacket. Stop and listen that's to right. this man. Be more like him because that's what's going to make that's you right. a champion. And, and pe people think that you got to be a jerk when you're like really good at stuff. And it's truly not true. Not. You really the opposite, man. A real champion is more gracious. You know, like and when humble. people say, you did great, you had it. That was a great lift you did. And I'm like, no, 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 no. No, that was a great lift that it was everybody did. I did not do that by myself. All right. I had, uh, you know, my spotters, you know, I, my, my main lift off guy, Spencer, he was there for me, the side lift off guys, my training partners that were there for me day in, day out. Those guys are just as much a part of that lift as I am. I couldn't have done it without That's those right. guys, you know? You know? And so to sit there and act like I did it, I, I, I did, you know, and, and I'll tell you, Ryan, before I went up and did that lift, I prayed and I said, you know, I said, God, I, I said, so God, I, I really don't care if I make it or I don't make it. Because what I'm really thankful for is the fact that I got to be competitive at this level for 50 years. Amazing. Who, who gets that opportunity? You know, and it's about the journey. It's about the process. That's what changed me. That's what helped create that's who right. I am. And I don't want to, that's the part that I want to grasp and figure out so I can help people who didn't, don't do, they don't lift weights, but I can help them learn the valuable lessons that I did learn through this process of 50 years. And that's the part I wanted to embrace. Yes, I'm extremely thankful for making the lift and being a part. But it's like every other record. It's going to yeah. get broke. You know, and it's not, and I, I just wanted to stand on that mountaintop where you've stood and be there and look around and go, I'm where no man That's has right. ever been before. I'm standing on sacred yes. ground. And, you know, and it's, it's a dream. It was a dream of mine since I was a little kid. I always wanted to be the best in the world at something, something. I didn't care what it was. And I just was driven to make it happen. And it eventually moved into the bench yep. press. And it happened. Awesome. And, but I'm thankful yeah. for it. But it's but if I don't cherish the process, then I'm gonna miss out on everything else. Because the goal was great. It's like it's like dessert, yeah. you know? But the everything else was the, the meat and potatoes. It's not about probably. getting to the end, it's about so, enjoying the journey, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy the journey. That's where it's all at. That's where the, if you're dreading it and you're not enjoying nope. it, you're missing right. out, man. If you if you think it's just about that goal, then you're you're getting over anxious about what you want to accomplish, and you have to be patient. You know that's one of the reasons why I was able to train for these this many years is I always kept telling myself, I'm just developing potential. I'm just developing potential. And I kept saying to myself, one day, I'm going to turn it all loose. But I'm just working on potential, working on potential, working on potential. And eventually, it just built to where I am now. But I'm thankful that I was able to stay healthy to be able to do it. Because like Louis said, you take an old man and you poke him with a needle, he's going to jump just as fast as yep. a young guy. Right. You know, that nervous system is going to react just as quick. It's only when you get injured that you can't react as efficiently. So I'm very blessed to not have had any in, in, in injuries. Yeah. All right. So incredible. Yeah. One more question, Ash. Yep, I got one more question, or kind of a couple here, <laughs> a couple parts. What was your training like leading into your last meet, where you broke the all-time bench press world record? Did you feel like everything was coming together and that you were going to hit that record that day? And what was the warm-up like? Did you feel like it was there that day? No, I had horrible workouts. No. Uh, <laughs> I got sick as a dog three weeks oh. out. Uh, my eyes looked like I was demon-possessed. They were completely blood red. I had more snot running out of my nose than you could ever humanly imagine. Uh, sick as a dog. Now, I didn't miss any workouts, but I was like, you know, we went to the, you know, when the first half, when we first started getting sick, uh, I went to the, to, to uh, Muzz's gym 
with uh, 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 Doug Schmidt, and I get up to 1080, and I'm like, nah, I'm not feeling it, guys. And I felt like crap for like the next uh, week. And we went back the next week and uh, did not have a good workout that week. I did not. I didn't, didn't have one good shirt workout. Yeah. Uh, nothing was great. Uh, then um, going to the meet, I had I went to NC State, spent the day with them. So I'm driving from Raleigh to Charlotte. Uh, it's getting about dark. And uh, it's freezing rain and snow. And I look in front of me. And the car in front of me is going to hit an aluminum ladder, hits it, car starts to uh, mess up, and it starts to go all over on the side. I hit it. Wham! And I feel the front end just go, wah, 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 wah. And I pull that uh, truck over. And for three and a half hours, in freezing rain, I, I had to change that wow. car. Uh, and, and it was seized on the <laughs> rim when I got the lug nuts. It would not come off. And I had 800 pounds of weight in the back of the truck. And the jack, I had to put it on an alternative site. It wasn't stable. So I'm not able to just ream my thing. Fortunately, I did have a hammer with me. But because I, I looked at YouTube, they said use a hammer. I tried hitting it with a hammer. Would not come off. I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm like, every step of this thing, brutally hard. Finally, I kept trying to get the uh, uh, claw in between it and the brake, and all of a sudden, boom, it popped loose. So then I put the spare on, and it had barely enough oh, air oh. in it. Oh, uh, gosh. It was it was a horrible, horrible nightmare. Thing. I mean, yeah, and I, I, stopped, I went, I went, because I had to. I had to go to the bathroom really bad. And it wasn't the kind where you just stand alongside the yeah. long pee, okay? Uh, you know, and I'm like, the whole three hours, I'm just squeezing oh. for all I'm worth. And that just made me more miserable. So then I, I drive to the rest area. I go to the restroom. I walk out, and I look at myself. And I got black all over me. I'm just, I look disgusting. So I clean up. Then I go to put air in the tire. And the stupid little plastic cap wouldn't come off. Fortunately, I had a pair of pliers. I about, I about took a knife and just cut the <laughs> sucker off. I was so mad. Uh, uh. But I finally got an air in it. I called my wife. I said, I'm not going to be over dramatic. But for the last three hours, I just went through the worst situation you could ever imagine. Uh, but it, it all worked out. But my arms, my forearms, my triceps were exhausted yeah. from trying to change that tire. And I'm thinking, Oh, great. Now I'm going to go try to bench 1,100 pounds. I'll tell you, no way. No way. Um, but, it, it, you know, obviously got it in the right position. And it happened, right. you know. So what I'm trying to say is this. You know, as you go into a meet, you, your training might not have been great. Uh, you might, you're going to face some adverse situations. But you've got to put that aside and overcome it because never are you – I don't ever remember – going into a meet where all the scenarios right. were perfect. It just doesn't happen, you know? And so you've got to be able to adjust as an athlete to whatever scenario that's that's you're going to have to face and put it behind you and still exhibit it. You know, and, and that's when people go and they say, well, you know, in the gym, I put up this big old weight. Well, what do you do in a meet? Because in a meet situation, there are some things, a lot of things you can't control. And all of a sudden, all those big lifts. That's happen, right. That's you know? right. Yeah, you know, so um, the guys who can get it done in the meets and overcome adversity, I, I, you know, I really admire what they could. You know, I really. Admire I agree that. with you, Bill. Yeah, totally. yeah. Okay. Do you have anything else, Ashley? Okay, that was that was my last. If you want to jump to your questions, over I, here, I got a couple. Um, I just want to say, you know. Uh, Doing the Wabdo meets when I first started out in 1997, I remember Wabdo Worlds. Yeah, Gus Rethwich would have a, a pamphlet that he would hand out to the lifters, and it had all the records in it. And I remember, I'm just going to tell a little story. And I remember uh, me, Paul Roch, and my guys, we'd open up the Washington State Open Bench Press records. And we're looking for the biggest guy who had the biggest bench, and it was Bill Gillespie. And I remember at one point you had a 540, and then I remember we went to a Worlds, and you had a 585. And it was 1997, and I remember I was there, 
and Paul Roch goes, that's Bill Gillespie behind you. And I turned around and looked and you were like two feet behind me. And he heard, you obviously heard what Paul said and you said, hi guys. And I go, that's Bill Gillespie. It was kind of like starstruck. And I, I remember it to this day <laughs> in that, in that uh, Portland uh, hotel warm up room and yeah. meeting you. And that was Bill Gillespie, the guy with the 585 bench. I was like, wow, that uh, it was just, it was just trip down memory lane there. Um, I got a couple of questions for you, Bill. Uh, what advice can you give to lifters that would possibly allow them to compete or power lift into their sixties like yourself? Okay. Be consistent. Okay. Don't overreach. Okay. Don't, um, don't go particularly in your workouts. Don't go and try to do things because you're over anxious to, to, to get to that okay. number. Okay. You're too, you're over focused on your goal. Uh, you think about you're trying to develop your strength. So you want to stay within your realms of, of training. My guys, uh, when they put, when I put them on their training program, they'll, uh, here, okay, here, here's a common okay. mistake. Okay. A, a guy goes through a, a training cycle, 10 week, let's say 10 week training cycle. All right. And his bench goes from 400 to 425. Okay. okay? He finishes it up, and he goes through it a second time. What do they do? They set their max at 425, right? right? Worst thing you could do. The worst thing you could do. Because it's not about how much weight can you lift. It's about how much tonnage can your body handle. And if you made great gains off of 400 max, you could make even continue to make great gains if you went to 410 or 405. See? And it's all about the adaptation of work capacity. When you start to overreach and start to try to handle weights that are too heavy, your technique's going to break down, your bar speed's going to slow down, and you're going to get injured within like three Very weeks true. after strain. Okay? So what I my guys... They'll, they go, it's universal, they do this. They go through the training cycle, make a big jump. They want to go and move their benchmarks way up. And I try to talk them out of it, but they are insisting yep. on it. Then they, three weeks into it, they go, coach, I screwed up. I need to go back down. Good. And they've gotten to the point now where they know that at a certain percentage of the real max, they make their best gains. It might be, uh, 89 to 91%, but most of the time I have them starting at 94% of what they actually, what their okay. max is. But but the, it's all about your tonnage, okay? That's the key. Uh, the other one is um, uh, when you're injured and you're coming back from an injury, okay? Everybody wants to start, obviously, with right. light weight. You have to, okay? But what do we do? We do sets of 10, whatever, high reps, okay? That's totally okay. wrong, okay? Because it's all about the tonnage now. Again, it's all about the tonnage. So what, what the Bulgarians figured out is if you're coming back from a joint injury, then you want to do sets of twos, one to, two, one to three reps. We do sets of twos, six sets of twos, normally what we do. And then you do it with the same light weight that you're going to do for 10. Okay. Okay, you don't feel nothing. Right. You're not sore no. at all. Come back the next day, very next day, add a little more weight and do it again for six sets of two, and develop that work capacity slowly. It's like it's like unbelievable how well okay. it works. Um, I had a young man, a wide receiver uh, for the um, University of Washington, had an injury, and what when the players at the University of Washington max. If they didn't get a new personal record, they had to meet with the head coach and explain to them why they didn't get a new personal record. Okay, so everybody understood what the deal. Was. But he had been injured uh, during the season. He comes in the off season, and we start out with 135, six sets of two. We worked him up to 365 for six sets of two. We had incorporated some assistant lifts along with all this. He comes test day. He goes up to um, uh, his max is 465. He puts 475 on it, and it's like a joke. He goes to 500, and he just smokes okay. it. And I said, I said to myself, I thought, gosh, this sucker could do 600. He turns to me, and he goes, 
I can do 600. I'm going to 600. And I went, let's do it. We load that bar up to 600. Boom. Squatted. 600 pounds. Now, remember, the heaviest way to get handled is 365 for six sets of two. Right. All right? Ben Andrews. And you get 600. Now, here's what really worked out really cool for him. Because he squatted 600 pounds, he goes to the combine. He goes to the Cowboys and says, listen, I'm built just like Jay Novacek. I know I've never played. I never played tight end, but I built just like him, and I could replace him. And I squatted 600 pounds. And the Cowboys said, "Who's your strength coach?" They said, "Bill Gillespie." He goes, they were, "We're going to call him because we know he don't pull no punches." And Sucker was drafted in the fourth round, got two Super Bowl rings. Damn, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, all because of that. I mean, that squat routine led into the. Him being able to do that and give him the confidence to be able to, to play tight end in the NFL. Wow. So that's just one story. I've had multiple stories where the, we start him back six sets of two, stupid lightweight, and gradually increase the weight. Then um, if you get if you eventually get back to seventy percent, then you can start to add a rep. So what you would do is like one workout do six sets of two, the next workout do six sets of three, the next workout. Do six sets of two, then do six sets of four, gotcha. all the way up to six sets of six. You can do six sets of six with it, and by then you're back. You're good to go. You're more okay. good to go. You might be stronger than you've ever been. So that's one of the coolest uh, rehab tricks I've ever. Wow, found. I've never heard that. Great advice. Great yeah, advice. Yeah, no, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow. uh, Bill, do you use bands or chains in your bench program? No, none. Okay. No, no, no. no uh, uh, I might occasionally do a band assisted bench press as a max effort. Assisted. Exercise. Band assisted. Yes. Okay. okay. Meaning above. above. Yeah. The, the reverse know. method. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I call them assisted or resisted. It makes more sense okay. to me. Yeah, so, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I don't do, I don't do much uh, band work. Um, uh, we do it more just to have fun in the off gotcha. season when we don't have a meet come up. We'll add in uh, max effort after our volume workout. Like if we do five by five, then we then we do the uh, max effort okay. afterwards. It's a little bit different way of doing it, but it's been very but successful. That's right. I can't absolutely. Uh, if you could delete one powerlifting rule, what would it be? I would get rid rid of the twelve inch bench press pad. Oh. I think that the, I think the twelve inch bench pad with the big benches are uh, is not it's not fair to the big guys with the uh, wide yep. backs, and I don't think with the eleven hundred pounds and more, I don't think you're getting the support, and uh, we're going to get shoulder injuries because of it. I think the bench pad needs to be thirteen or fourteen inches. Yeah, sometimes wide. for us big guys, it's like laying on a popsicle stick, you know, and yes. stability yeah. is an issue. Yeah, I, I like a wider bench pad it's myself. Huge. Yeah, it don't have to be that wide, you know. But in the in the federation I lived in, they allow a thirteen awesome. inch bench. bench okay. Bench. Yeah. Okay, and and then I just so, a real quick question: How often do you train your uh, bench band shirt? Does that uh, vary uh, depending on the training, or is there a specific uh, etched in stone uh, regimen where we're in our shirt this day, this day, this day? Uh, ideally, as I'm getting ready for a meet, weekly. Um, but the problem is. Is finding my spot. Yeah. yeah, I just sometimes, sometimes I automatically get you know, Well, I don't get to do the shirt this week. Uh, sometimes I have really bad guys. I've had that, Bill. Me, and then I'm not going to go super heavy. Uh, you know, uh, it's just uh, it, it's it's more of a factor of of, of my spotters yeah. than it, I than the ideal situation. Yeah, I've watched, I watched you some know? of your lifts, and your three-man handoff are just absolutely perfect. I mean, they set that bar out in your line. There's no teeter-totter. And, I mean, that, yeah. that just makes the whole lift when you have the perfect handoff, too. Well, see, that's those guys down there at Muzz's gym. They kept telling me, you come down here, let us work with you, and we'll get you the perfect yeah. lift-off. And I'm like, all right, it's worth right. it. Because I know that when it's there, when they – you know, you know, I, I stole one of the ideas from Jimmy – where you do the uh, assist, one of my assistant lifts is to bench with that cambered squat right. bar, you know, and you know some guys like the bamboo bar, but I, I didn't care about it. I, a bamboo bar didn't do nothing, but the the, uh, the cambered squat bar felt like 
it was working the stabilization of the bench shirt more than anything else I've ever done. And so the guys, when they lift it off to me, if they didn't lift it out properly, the first rep, I'm like battling yeah. with it, touch it, push it up, and then I got it in position. And then I'm like, boom, boom. And they're like, oh, your second and third rep was really easy. And I'm like, well, because I got the bar in position. The lift off, if you don't get it in, in position for me, I'm going to struggle. And that was a good visual for them to uh, see what they needed to do. So, uh, you know, the the big, great guys. I love them for the way they, you know, particularly my uh, Spencer Mather and Ben uh, Williamson. They've they've been there for me all the time. You know, they'll they'll travel whenever they need, whatever they need to do. And uh, when I was working with a supplement company, I had a really good deal where they gave me uh, $1,500 a month for travel and competition. And so, because they said, you know, Obviously, your spotters are worth fortune. So I could take uh, $700 or whatever, and I could give that money to uh, my spotters and help them out financially, you know? So it helped them with their families and telling their wives, yeah, you know, we'll make $300 by helping Bill out, you know? But now I don't have that, you know, don't have that finances to do that. And uh, and, was, and real quick, are you going to write a book uh, at some point, Bill? I, as mentioned in your bio? Yes. Um, Travis Mash. Um, and I, I did a podcast okay. with him. And tr- Travis and I uh, think very, very okay. much alike. And he's really good at writing and a lot better than I am. And um, he also is probably way more intelligent than I am. And um, he can put into words what I'm, the concepts okay. that I'm trying to put out there. So I've wrote a lot of stuff. I just got to get someone to put it right. all together. He, and Travis he, said he he, he'd it. be like a ghostwriter per se, or yeah, we okay, co-write. Right. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah, I just want to make sure the information is yeah. out there, you know, I, I'd be... because it's just so hard for me to sit here and describe to you uh, how to program, uh, uh, write up your right. bench workouts. It would be it's, it's four yeah. hours to just sit there and just, just help you understand that. So instead, uh, if I do a book, I can just write it all out and say, here, here's my hip, what I call the heavy duty routine. And um, it's like a week and a half yeah. long. I only, it's, only, it's really short. We, and we, then we, we go every week and a half and we change our max after every week and a half. So it's, it's all about being, that's why I say, you can't miss any workouts because we're what our goal is. We're trying to be on zero. We want to be exactly where you're at every day you walk right. in there. So your 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 body's not moving the bar too slow, too fast. It's always uh, moving at the right speed. Yeah, I definitely want to uh, get that book whenever yeah, it's printed for sure. For sure. I can't so. wait. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so much information. We'll move over Amazing. to the chat box, Bill. We got a few questions over here, and we'll and then we'll shut the show down. But uh, Ashley, you want to read a couple over here? Um, Davenport Barbell, Bill is the man, wonderful man of God. Awesome, thank you, Davenport Barbell. Roger Brome, thanks for being on tonight, Coach Bill. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, Dan Logman. What was the bench total you had with your son, Cameron? Oh, man. Uh, My son, I benched somewhere in the mid-500s. So we're at like 1,700 pounds. Mm -hmm. So uh, Gus told me back in uh, early 2000s that we were the strongest (laughs) father-son bench press in history. And uh, one of us, has continued to raise that number. The other one, I got to get to go and to get him in a shirt to help him uh, uh, put up a bigger number. So he's fully capable. Wow. He's done. A, he did a 500 pound raw bench uh, a couple wow. years ago. So, yeah, Genetic. Yeah, yeah, he's awesome. strong. Wow. Yeah, he's that strong. So uh, I, I, I love. You know, when we trained together when we when he you know was in Washington and stuff, he kind of took it for granted. And then uh, I was a strength coach in college, and uh, it was pretty cool to coach him. He cleaned 400 pounds. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. So 
Uh, that was pretty cool. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, just to coach your son. And then, uh, but now he lives in Connecticut. And so maybe three, four times a year, I get to go train with him. And that's, that's it, you awesome. know? So. That's crazy though. He's like father, like son, super, super strong. That's yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. He's really strong. Now he's a grinder. He, he moves, he'll push that bar oh. slow. And I don't know how he does it. Uh, my, <laughs> Mine's fast or not at all. <laughs> Time under tension. <laughs> yeah. And did I miss, did you say how old he was? Uh, he's like 33 okay. now, something like that. Okay. Yeah, he pulled, uh, I saw him in a, a wobble meet in New York. He pulled 771 within an inch to yeah. the lockout and lost it. That raw, Ooh, pulled it raw. Wow. Yeah. Darn it. Yeah, he, yeah, oh, oh, Pops never pulled that. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> did he rub that in at all or was he... Oh, you know, you know what? He never yeah. does. He's very classy. He's, he's so proud of me. Awesome. Um, you know, when I when I set the record, uh, I called my wife, and she bawled. She cried oh. so hard, oh and uh, she knew how much this meant to me. And then um, I called my son, and I tried to play it off. I said, "Oh man." Yeah, the first one, I brought it down halfway. My leg cramped up. I told him to grab the bar. Second one, I brought it down. I thought it was an inch and a half from touching. Turned out it was a quarter of an inch from touching. And I just told, I, my chest collapsed. And I said, take the bar. I said, I just knew it was over. And I just, I just did, I just knew I wasn't going to make the last one. But then I did it. You did <laughs> it. So you didn't know. <laughs> there times a charm. That's crying. awesome. And uh, <laughs> then I called my daughter. And told her, and she started oh, crying. Wow. And uh, you know, it was just they've seen, they've been there. Yeah. You know, they've seen me doing the push-ups and everything else in the hotel, everything I can do to get this bench record. You know, and like I said, I'm not the strongest guy out there. There's guy Jimmy's just Jimmy's so much stronger than I am. And I, I told Jimmy I worked out with him, and I said, Jimmy, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm going to try to break your record. And when I do, I need you to do me a favor. And he goes, what's that? I said, you need to annihilate it, <laughs> okay? <laughs> you need to go push it so high, and then I'll tell everybody, yeah, that's what it took to yeah. break <laughs> <laughs> Nice. So, it. yeah, I'm cheering for all these guys. Um, I, it would be awesome if I could be there in person to uh, congratulate them. But I, I have their numbers, and I will call them. And um, I want to congratulate them because, um, you know, it's every record's meant to be yeah, broken, you know, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, I have my time and uh, I'm really rooting for them to do a great job, you know. Awesome. awesome. So. Very, very classy. Good sportsmanship. I love it. Um, optimal training. Bill, how often do you bench? What do you do to recover from your heaviest session? Uh, um. Uh, I know that uh, the, the, the th in theory, you're supposed to do light cardio for 10 to 15 minutes at about 115 beats per, per minute To is the number one method of, of okay. recovery, okay, according to the Russians. Um, um, I don't always have that time. Uh, a lot of times, Monday's my big day. Then I have a Zoom conference, and sometimes it's grab my stuff, throw it in the truck, put my phone up and I'm in the truck doing a zoom, yeah. my zoom conference for the company I work for. Um, you know, uh, as far as cool down, uh, you know, it's basically, I basically just take protein. I don't have my warm ups. Uh, everybody does all kinds of goofy stuff. Uh, I do uh, 155, three sets of six and, uh, I'm ready to go. Wow. You know, the first set, first set, First set, I'll bring it. I just bring it down to where I feel, you know, I don't overstretch. And I just bring it down, bring it down. And when I touch, then I start counting my okay. reps. But uh, I don't force anything down. I just move it smooth. And then I work on each time getting my legs underneath me. And um, then I'm ready okay. to go. But I don't, I don't do any kind of uh, stretching. Anything like that. Roll on a PVC pipe. Do any front delt raises. I do that. No, that messes okay. me up. If I do, I do it the night before. Okay. okay. I do it a lot every night. 
every night I, I got a foam roll and I'm you know working on yep. that arch every single yep. night. Uh, but uh, no, not not before I bench press. It's, I never felt it never feels okay. good to me to do it before I bench. And you don't do any shoulder want you just go straight on onto the bench. Okay. Yep. I don't. No, I don't do anything. Warm my shoulders up wow. or nothing. Oh, wow. Uh, I know it sounds crazy, but it, it works clearly for it you. works hey. for you. So, yep, yep, yeah, gotta do what works yeah. for sure, for yeah. sure. Optimal training. I heard you talk about artificial acceleration and how a lifter can miss the lift because of it. How do you detect that this is the case for a lifter? Artificial acceleration. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, I'm talking about artificial acceleration, meaning this. Um, when you go to bench, all right, and you sink the bar into your chest and heave it up, particularly like with a yep. board, all right, you're creating artificial acceleration. Your butt, when you pick your butt up off the bench, you're creating artificial yep. acceleration. And so when you go into a meet, that's nope. not going to happen. Okay. okay. So stop, stop doing that. Everything we do in the workout, who cares how weak you might look in a workout? I don't care. I don't care if I'm not the strongest guy in the workout. All right? But when we go to the meet, I'm going to lift at least 200 right. pounds more than you do. All right? Uh, and that's the only thing that counts. I don't care in a workout how weak you might think I am. I don't care. doesn't matter. What I want to do it is everything I do is going to transfer to that that's shirt. Right. Everything. That sure to lift, that sure to so, contest lift, yeah. Yeah, but too many guys, their ego can't That's... handle it, so they go into the workout, they compromise on the technique yep. to get a bigger That's number, true. but then that technique screws their uh, mechanics up for the competition. That's very true, Bill. I've seen it, and I continue to see it sometimes, so I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that totally yeah. makes sense. Hmm. Tim Waddell. Tim O'Dell. Hello, Bench Monster TV fam. Sorry I'm late. Congrats on your record, Bill. Excellent. Thanks for joining us, Tim. Better late than never. One rep max. Hey guys, sorry I couldn't make it right right now. Some family stuff going on. Congrats on your record, Mr. Gillespie. Been looking forward to this interview for a while. I also enjoyed your workout with Kobe. Okay, very cool. Oh yeah. 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 Thanks for joining us, one rep. Just glad you made it. Anonymous. Amazing record over six over age sixty. What shirt did you use? I used a uh, uh, Mike uh, Womax Bison uh, 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 four ply. I, I had a three ply. I really enjoy. I I'll tell you a little secret. Uh, I found is that with the the three ply. You can train reps in it, okay? Uh, you could. I, I did eight hundred for wow. ten. All right. You, yeah, you can do reps in it. Thank you. All right. Okay. And when you do reps in the shirt, it's going to teach you the technique of how to get all the way down and how to use the shirt and more effectively than anything. Okay. 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 Um, okay. The what I found is when I use the shirt, and this is really hard to do, is I'm going to use my shoulders and upper back to bring the weight down. And I'm going to try my best to not use my triceps. I'm going to try to relax them the best I can. All right. That way I'm not fighting the shirt and I'm allowing my, the elasticity of the shirt to do its job. Now, when it's time to push the weight up, Boom, then I'm going to throw away Makes the triceps sense. at that point in time. But you learn how to do that in a lesser ply shirt than what you're going to okay. compete in. Makes all right? sense. Uh, when I went to a four ply, I tried to do the reps in a four ply. No way. The most I could ever do is two. It was just, it's just too much tension and it's just, I just never could do it. So uh, I recommend guys who want to learn how to use the shirt is to start with a shirt that uh, may be a little less than the one you really want to use. So if you want to compete in a three, go to a two-ply, 
learn how to do the reps in it, and then I don't have a problem at all just training with the three five and showing up to the meet, put on the four wow. five. Wow. Okay. You know? Okay. Don't, it doesn't bother me at all, but I'm used to it. You know, I know what to expect, so it's it's not that foreign to me. Okay. So, okay. That's awesome, Bill. That's excellent advice. Anonymous. Anonymous. Love Bill's part in West Side versus the world. No local gym would tell him what the address was. Love this guy. Gives us all hope over 40 and 50. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> That's very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Mary asks you, hello, Mr. Gillespie. Congrats on your oh. awesome bench record. Hi, Mary. Thanks oh. for making it. Um, Anthony Caruso, what's Bill's approach to training upper back? I think I've heard him talk about doing lots of pull-ups before. Yes. Yes. Great okay. question. Yeah, that's great. All right. The upper back, you know, I used, I used to think that if I made my chest bigger, that I wouldn't have to bring the bar down so far. But it's not true. I went and um, I think it was 97. Uh, Anthony Clark, I got to spend four days wow. with him, the, the Samoan reverse grip yep. bench press, you know. Yep. I spent four days with him at, uh, in New Orleans at our National Strength Coaches Conference. And uh, like two weeks later, I go to the uh, uh, National Championships in powerlifting, and, and uh, uh, Mark Philippi, comes to me and says, hey, do you have a coach? And I said, no, uh uh He goes, would you like Eddie to coach you? I said, who's Eddie? And he goes, oh, I'm sorry, Eddie Cole. <laughs> and I'm like, you're lying. No way. He goes, no, he came and asked if he could coach you. And I'm like, he knows who I am? I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And he goes, yeah, he'll do a great job. Oh, my gosh. I'll tell you, my second attempt, I was, uh, I was low enough, and they didn't pass it. And Ed just ripped the judges. I mean, ripped them. The next attempt, I was an inch high. <laughs> That's my will. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Very cool. Anthony Caruso has another question. Anthony Caruso, any tips or tricks that helped you create good habits and discipline? Oh, the, the process is what helps develop that do a discipline. Which you start to go and you realize, well, I could go do this. And you go choose to do it. I remember uh, I went swimming one time before, the day before uh, a meet. I had a horrible meet, horrible. And I'm like, oh, I, I, you know, I wanted to have fun with the kids and everybody. And I'm like, no, I can't do that anymore. I don't get, you know, go bowling. I can't go bowling anymore because it hurts my elbows. But you know what? I mean, some of those things you sacrifice to become everything you dreamed of being, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, when I get criticized, you know, why why can't you be normal? Why can't you be like everybody else? And I'm like, because it's too easy to be Very normal. Very easy. Right. You know? Yeah, I don't want to be normal. I want to be... I want to be abnormal. I want to do something extraordinary, something that you know that nobody else can say that's they've right. done. You know, Absolutely. that sets us apart from other people. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. All right. Anonymous has a question. What does Bill think about Lamar Grant? Gant. Lamar Gant. Sorry, Gant. Sorry. Lamar yeah. Gant, the yeah. deadlifter. Oh, he's a stud. He's a he's a legend. Uh, Oh, he's awesome. I never got to meet him. Okay, but of course he was a he was the real deal back in the day. I don't know what, what was his era, Bill. Was that the late eight, eight, early eighties, Lamar Gant? Yeah, yeah, through the eighties. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Six, 660 yeah. some yeah. deadlift at one thirty or something, one forty. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever see the picture of his uh, scoliosis? The X-ray no. while he's deadlifting. No. Oh my gosh, it looked like a big old ass. Really? Man. And his yeah, as he picked up the weight. His whole spine would collapse. Oh my God! Down. Oh. Wow! Yeah. I didn't... Oh, it was. Look, look, look up some of his. Yeah, it was crazy. Videos. Yeah, that sounds nuts. I don't know if we'll do this question here because it leaves so many, so many people out. I mean, could we make it top ten? 
Well, I just because it's kind of like the Mount Rushmore question. You're picking the five best, so we don't. So, want... so somebody is asking, and you can choose to not answer yeah, it or to heart. make it top ten because it is kind of like the Mount Rushmore one. Um, besides yourself, who are your top five best benchers of all time? Oh, and gosh. I guess you can skip it. Yeah, we can skip there's so that. Many, there's so many, or you can make it top ten. Yeah. Um, I know yeah, it's, it's oh, tough. That's hard. Because there's so, so many guys many. I admire, you know. I mean, Ryan, what you did was just mind-boggling how strong and powerful Thank you were. Thank you. I mean, I was just, I was in awe at, at what you could do. And uh, I, and it wasn't just how much weight you did, it's how fast you did it. And your physique was, oh, I tell, I tell people this day, I, I, I hit a table and I said, you see this table? I said, <laughs> It's softer than Ryan's back. <laughs> I said, it, it, I pat him on the back, and I just, it startled me. I'm like, I've never hit a human being t- that had, so, that was so hard. And it was, it wasn't like he was flexing with, he didn't know I was going to do it. It was just, that uh, yeah, that's like, what it was. Oh my gosh. I was just like, this is, he's incredible. Uh, you know, and I, I, I mean, Ryan, I got to tell you, uh, that one time I got to come to Tri Cities and work out with you when we were at Seahawks yep. training camp. And I showed you how I set up the yep. bands. All right. Afterwards, I got in the truck and was driving home. And I went, oh, crap. I set them things up wrong. I had them six inches lower than they were supposed to be. And you took 495, which is a weight I never even came close to. And you went, wham, yeah. wham. You did it twice. And you go, yeah, I can see where that would work. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God. I just remembered that. That was so long ago. I was like, I was like, I went back to the Seahawks. I said, you're never going to believe what this guy did, man. I remember that, Bill. That's wow. Awesome. That's a trip down memory lane right there. How long ago was that? Do you remember? Oh, two, 2002, somewhere in there. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. 2002, two, three, yeah. Or 20 four years was ago. when I was with the yep. Seahawks. So. Yeah. We go to uh, Sheeney for four yep. weeks for training camp, you know, and, uh, we get a day off, and I did that time where I, you know I couldn't go home. But I thought, man, maybe I could go over there and you know train yeah. with Ryan, you know, show him some of the, some some of the tricks yeah. I'm doing, you know, because I want to help you out. I want to help you out because I, you know, I, I knew you're you know you're chasing after that you know huge yep. bench press, 1100 you know pounds, and I I certainly didn't see myself as that guy who could, could do that, you know. But I thought maybe you could, you know, so. Oh, I thought, you know, hey, I'll go over there and show Ryan and help yeah, them out. I remember that, know? Bill. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Trip down memory line. Very cool. Yeah. Um, Anonymous has a question. Anonymous. We might have missed this part where you talked about it, but important to talk again, so we'll mention it again. What about the 5x5 five five program? Yes. The 5x5 five five program is so crucial. Uh, it works incredible. I usually start a guy at about 72% for five by five. Okay. And then, um, we will, uh, if I, a lot of times I'll just start, just go and add five pounds every workout and just keep going. And then if it gets to be, um, start, if it starts to get hard, then I'll go Mondays and Fridays on our heavy day. Wednesday, I drop it down to about 73% to make sure he's able to be successful. But we buy one and a quarter pound plates. Right? So he's not going to take a five-pound jump every week. He's going to do uh, take a two-and-a-half-pound right. jump. And it allows a sustained longer period of ga- uh, making gains where he can continue to go. And I'll tell you, a lot of times, the guys will finish the five-by-five five and we'll do a like, heavy single after uh, you know the next workout, and they'll put up the biggest bench of their life. Wow. And not, not ever, we never touched a heavy weight. And uh, I did it uh, about three years ago, and uh, it's kind of where I developed the whole theory of like incorporating the number of exercises with the like the Bulgarians, because all I did was five right. by five, okay. and I did it for like eight months straight. Oh, wow. But I went from a four, like a four sixty raw bench, to I got uh, four forty. For five sets of five. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, you know, and I'm like, you know, I just kept staying, I kept staying on it, kept being consistent with it, and uh, lo and behold, 
all of a sudden I'm putting up almost as much for five by five as I was doing for one. And then, you know, my raw max then jumped way right. up, you know, I ended up doing like around 520, you know, you know, it changed who I was uh, more than any other workout I've done. It's so simple. But uh, uh, what's that book? Uh, oh, gosh. It was back in the 70s. Uh, they wrote a book. It's, it's a legendary book. But anyway, uh, and that's what they talk about, doing five by five. Okay. You know? It's just... And the Russians did the, the, the uh, training, uh, the theory of research, and found five to six reps is the ideal rep zone for the bench press. Right. Okay. So I never do, I never, ever do more than uh, six reps, ever. I never do, ever. Ever. Never do tens. I never do eights. Always, it's always uh, uh, a, a one, to, one okay. to six repetitions. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, uh, anonymous, another question. Um, how much in bands for lightened method on top? how much actual bar weight so they're talking about the reverse band the reverse method. band yep sorry so he wants to, the, like the yeah. Yeah. yeah he wants to know how much yeah. the, it sounds like he wants to know how much um the what, bands what, are what doing band? at the top like what band yeah. and then how much a light band, a medium band a strong band uh choke yeah we use the, the blue bands okay. most of the time um and uh I don't remember how high we got them set up above, um, but uh, I, I came up with an apparatus. We we have we have to bench on an ER. I bench on an okay. ER bench, all right. But I I design um, my own bench pads, and um, I talked to Sornex about it this weekend, and uh, they were like, maybe we should uh, d design some bench pads so we can yes, sell them because if, if the power lifters mm -hmm. love them so much, they really do like them. Um, and so, uh, we're looking into that possibility. So I took a bench pad and I redesigned it and I have it on the bench, on the ER bench, but we also developed, a, 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 an apparatus that we can bolt to the, uh, ER bench that allows you to use, uh, bands above. Oh, you. oh wow. Nice. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. convenient. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty, pretty slick way it works. So, uh, but uh, uh, it, it took me a little while to figure out. The first one wasn't real uh, secure. And... <laughs> a little wobbly. <laughs> a little sketchy. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, we got it. We got pretty much got it down yeah. now. But I don't do it. I don't do it very often. It's very okay. rare. It's more for fun. Just okay. for fun. How? And you know what? Um, uh, I don't like using bands with the shirt uh, in particular because the bands, um, the bands take away a lot of the stabilization. Uh, there's not as much stabilization True. going on. And so I really, really get a false illusion of what I can do on the bench press. It's, I, I, I'm a big believer that uh, any type of assistant lift that you do, if it gets to where it's so much heavier than your actual bench, I, I question how much it's going right. to transfer. You know, okay, it's like... Uh, we do, you know, the 15 second holds where you just yep. hold the weight. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, we do those. All right, and I'm gonna share you a little secret with this. Okay, the number one indicator lift for my bench press in the shirt is the floor press. If I'm good at the floor press, my shirt's gonna go okay. really well. Okay. Okay. So what's the theory on that? You do more floor press. You would right? think. You would think, but that's, that's right. not true. All right. What I do is I do a 15 second holds, okay? But I don't do them like everybody else does where their arms are locked out and you're just holding it with your arms locked up. We bring it down a fourth to a third of the way, then we start it. And you're holding it with your arm oh. bent. Oh, whoa. Yeah, and so you're, you know, totally like for me, if I ever could get up to 500 pounds, I'd be like, oh my gosh. I mean, I suck at it, but it transfers to the floor press better than anything else. What happened, Ryan, was this, is uh, I was doing floor presses, and I did, uh, this is back a couple of years ago, my bench wasn't going very well, uh, but I did 495 on a floor press, which I thought was pretty good. A year later, I, and normally I'm around 450, okay? 
A year later, weighing the same thing, I do four presses, and I do four or five. 90 pounds different. Wow. I went, whoa, what's the difference? So then I did the research and found I quit doing the 15-second holds. Oh. Okay. Started back doing them, and lo and behold, you know. And I don't, I do, most time I just do one set. Sometimes I rarely while I do okay. two sets. But, yeah, I don't do very many sets, but. It, it, it does help a lot in, uh, in uh, okay. the shirt. Okay. Perfect. Excellent. Let's Showbit. See, where's my hand? Showbit Jane, congrats on your record, Bill. What movement or exercise has cr- contributed most to your lockout strength? By the bench? Well, that one I was telling you earlier with the temple yep. bench, huge. Training with extended range of motion. Uh, I guess people call them Larson presses. I call them dead leg benches. But because I don't really put my legs straight out in front of me, what I do is I pick my feet up off the ground and I put my feet next to the post, okay, that's under the, the foot mm-hmm. of the bench so that uh, I have some type of lateral stability so I don't have to worry. And if something was to happen, my feet can go right on the ground right. instantly, you know? All right. So, uh, but I'm doing it. I pick my feet up because it lowers my chest, which yep. is going to increase range the range of motion. Yeah. motion. Yeah. So then I go and move the grip in slightly. All right. So then that's going to increase my Ooh. range of motion also. Okay. So that I call dead leg narrow grip bench. That's one of my key exercises in developing my bench press. Uh, as far as my assistant was, I think I've basically. I think I've said it. I've told you guys every single assistant look okay. that I did okay. so far. Right. So you can see this. You know, what's funny is that when I take people through my workouts, they go, oh, you do a lot of variation. But when you see it on paper, you go, you don't do a lot of variation. But, I really, but, it, but, but the variations are subtle to the bench press. Okay? All right. Okay. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Um, where we are, Ryan? Anthony, Anthony Caruso. Caruso. I've used the six sets of two before thanks to one of Bill's other interviews, and it's great. I would use AMRAPs on the final sets too. Also, also Anthony Caruso. What's Bill's thoughts on? Pro- I can't. I can't. Chart. Pr- I can never say this right. Pr- Prolipians charts, and how does he determine how much overall volume a lifter should do? Mm. All right. Um, I don't really follow his charts. Okay. okay? Um, my volume is uh, based off of um, the experience of the lifter. Okay. Um, one thing that I want to make sure the Russians stress is that you're, if you want to be strong, okay then you have to train to be strong all the time, okay? You can't go through this, the Western periodization model where you go through this hypertrophy phase and you get a weight on your bench press, okay? I got to clarify that. On your bench press, you you cherish that bench press. Now, that doesn't mean that it's always going to be heavy. There's a phase of training when you're going to reduce what we call your relative intensity. You're going to reduce the amount of weight that you have on your bench press, but you're going to increase the amount of volume you do on your assistant okay. lifts. Okay. Now, on my assistant lifts, uh, pull-ups, dips, love them. Okay? But I never do more than six reps. All right? Always do sixes. I've tried everything else. I always do sixes. But if I need more volume, I'll do more sets of oh, sixes. Okay? okay? That's how I determine the volume. I'm not going to increase my volume on my bench press because my bench press is the key indicator. If I, if I want, like the Russian court said, if I want to be fast, you have to train to be fast year round. It's such a precious commodity that you don't want to go and lose it and by training incorrectly. Right. Totally. Okay? Totally. Makes sense. Anthony Caruso would like to know how would he work slingshots into someone's program that trains raw? You know, um, 
I think there's a place for them, and I would suggest doing it after your base okay. workout. Like if you did five by five, then I would suggest doing one to three reps because one to three reps is the best rep zone for developing strength. Okay. Okay. It doesn't develop muscle hypertrophy, but it develops strength. It's great okay. for strength. Perfect. Tim O'Dell. Bill is, Bill, it is really awesome. You and your son are super tight and trained together. All fathers should be like you. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. Thanks, Tim, for joining us. Paul Lawfer. Hey, guys, how's it going? Hey, Bill, it was an honor seeing you break the bench record and being there to side spot you. See you soon, yeah. my friend. Yeah. Very cool. Very yeah. good advice. Paul was yep. awesome. Paul was cheering me on, <laughs> man. That's cool. I didn't realize he was a side spotter. That's awesome. Um, Howard, Weingarten. Howard Weingarten. Hello, Mr. Gillespie. I'm turning 57 in seven days, and your new record is very inspiring to me. Do you think a slingshot band would do the same as a ply lower shirt would do? No. No, the shirt's going to give you more. Uh, Ryan, we didn't talk about this on the, on the, on the show yet, but when you, when you get uh, the research that I've read says that at 60, you have to double your protein intake. Okay. okay? All right. But, what, and I started, and I, I went and I said, I know that's not good for my digestive no. system. Right. Okay. So it plugged me all up. Right. So I said, why? Why do I have to go and right. double it? And it was because your digestive system as you get older, isn't as effective. So I take a digestive enzyme to increase my digestive uh, uh, process, which allows me to maximize the protein that I do take. And I'm blessed because I'm uh, the company I work for, I get Thorne supplements all I want, as much as oh, I want. That's free. Yeah. How, how many grams of protein are you consuming a day, Bill, if you have to double your protein? Is it two grams per body weight? Look, I don't even okay. know. I just take it. I just take it frequently okay. throughout the day. Um, but uh, I, I I do find that uh, you know food, you getting your protein through your food is like twice, three times better than through yeah. supplements. Okay, okay? I'm, not, I'm not batching supplements. I love them, but uh, food is like I used to say all the time that the reason my son and I were the strongest father and son in the world. Was because my wife's <laughs> cooking, and lately I've been the one doing the cooking, and uh, you know it, I can feel the difference. I mean, my, my wife fixed food that, gosh, it was just had all these good stuff in it. You know, it tastes great, and uh, she's a way better cook than I am. <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, so it, it made a difference, you know. And I think that I think that's a lot of people are missing out in that uh, it, it's really so valuable what you eat mm -hmm. you know um you know and I, I i'm just like anybody else you know ryan i hear you you know just joking around about you know dip, getting you know hamburgers yeah. and stuff like that and i'm like oh yeah 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 i mean i'll kill yeah. it you know when i'm going to get when i get ready for a meet my wife she can't stand it she's like she, she sees me gaining right. the weight she goes oh you got to meet because one of the biggest tricks i had was this i if i get stale all right and i quit making gains I lose weight, okay? Like recently, I dropped down to 300 pounds, all right? I hold it. I sustain it. I cut, at that time, I cut all sugar out of my diet, all right? I wouldn't eat, I wouldn't touch it because I was hoping it would help my legs. Um, then uh, I found out I could have some sugar. <laughs> and I'm like, man, I'm going to be some pie. Yeah. Ooh, Ice, Ice cream, cream. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you know? And uh, pretty soon, I'm like 325. Uh, but, when I gained that weight back, my bench went crazy. Dave, I told Dave Tate about it. He goes, Bill, that's the closest you'll ever feel like you're on steroids. And I went, oh, my God. That's pretty <laughs> silly, You know? <laughs> I mean, I feel, it feels incredible. I mean, you walk in there and you just go, ah, oh, a yep. team man. I went, and I'll, I'll share, I'm going to share a protein supplement I got from the Russians. Okay. okay? They, I, call, they, I can't believe, my guys will my guys will be like, you shared that on this? Yeah, I'm sharing tons of information. All right? Um, but uh, 
getting your protein through a natural source is the best protein that you could have. Okay, we know that. All right, eggs and milk, best protein yeah. you could have. Raw eggs. Okay, taking the egg whites. Now the problem is we know that if the egg whites not cooked, we can't assimilate the protein. Okay, we can't do it. The body won't break it down. But the Russians found an ingredient, and I confirmed this twice to make sure this was true. They found an ingredient that will allow your body to absorb the protein from a raw egg. Okay. Right? And uh, so what you do is you take four to six egg whites. Uh, I take a, I take a shaker, uh, a protein shaker bottle, and I fill it all the rest up full of milk. Okay. okay? Uh, 2%. It's mm-hmm. fine. All right. And then the magic ingredient, I swear to you, all right, is vegetable oil. Vegetable oil. You would really. Yeah. Yes. That's crazy. How much vegetable oil? A tablespoon. A tablespoon of vegetable oil. You mix that in there, and I'm telling you what. The first time I ever took it, Ryan, I weighed in at two nineteen, two nineteen. All right, in a contest in October, the third week. All right. By and I bet three eighty. By the second week of January, I was two sixty five, and I bet five hundred ten pounds. So adding that to each of your egg white shakes, a tablespoon of vegetable oil. Yeah, I just yep twice a day. Wow, I, twice I, a day I, between my meals. Yeah, write that down. Yeah, I got it written down. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna research that a little bit. I've never heard that before, Bill, and it's very interesting. I know. And if that is a magic trick, I mean, I, I drink a lot of egg whites. Yeah. Costco egg whites. Yeah. Constantly put them in my shake. So many eggs here. Uh, yeah. But don't yeah. add any vegetable oil. This regular, like... Uh, yeah. Not canola, not sunflower. Vegetable oil. Vegetable oil. Okay. Yeah. I, I, we, kept, we kept asking him. And he goes, vegetable oil. Number one supplement. Vegetable no oil. No shit. Wow. I, Bill, yeah. that's, that could be a yeah. game changer for a lot of people that uh, like to consume I know. egg whites, including I know. myself. I know. Yeah. I mean... You know, that's why people go tell me, um, you know, I train, you know, I train just like you do. How do you put so much weight up? Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, no, you don't. You don't know what I know. I know. I all, I know all these tricks. I know all these little secrets. And, you know, I, I love this one. You want to double your strength gains over your training period? All right. So, like, say your bench goes up 20 pounds. You can double it. You can go 40 pounds with ultraviolet radiation treatment. Lay in the sun. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Okay. Between work. Oh, wow. Yep. 20, 20 minutes. minutes. Unbelievable how much it'll help you recover from your workout. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the problems with living in Washington State, especially Western Washington. Where it rains it's always all cloudy, time. yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah but, uh, you know, and, and the tanning beds, I asked about it, but back then they said, no, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't transfer. Now, the ones they say today, I've heard them say that it does, it would create. That's what uh, that's what I heard a long time ago. Look. Tanning beds can help uh, with that scenario. But yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, oh, that's very interesting. Yeah. yeah, there's a ton of tricks yeah, out there. Yeah, very I interesting I've stuff. Learned, I've, learned I've, I've learned so, so much, much tonight, tonight, Bill. It, it's like it's crazy. I'm gonna have to go rewatch the show I again. Am. Yeah, it's awesome. Oh, totally. <laughs> Totally. Oh, we got a couple so questions so left, Bill, and that'll. And then we can, yeah, man, we've kept we kept you on, you on a long, long time, time, but I'm sure it's like midnight again, where you're at. So much information, like. Yeah, yeah. it's almost one. Oh my god! Oh, sorry, <laughs> we're sorry. Like, well, there's a couple more. We'll yeah, we'll wrap it up. But... Oh, that's fine. No, no, no. I'm doing okay. great. Perfect. Oh crap! Well, we're. I mean, just getting so much great information here. Um, let's see where we're at. We're at the last two here, Zachary. Okay, Zachary P. McDonald. Thank you so much for doing this interview. And then... Um, this last one here is kind of... Is it a question or a comment? It's, it's a little bit of both. Just okay. read them. Um, Daywalker Mike. I wonder how much Bill benches raw. I ask because I only bench raw and I don't have the slightest experience with equipment. I like both raw and equipped bench press and I respect all athletes. So is there a question there? Well, I wonder how much Bill Bench is raw. It's kind of you the don't really like. Well, you know, and, and like I said earlier, if it doesn't transfer to the shirt, I don't okay. care. You know, and I found it, to, and I and I found that it became counterproductive when I got too aggressive. 
I was starting to get, I uh, wanted to, you know, you get kind of greedy. You start to push up bigger weights than you've ever pushed before, raw, and you start to convince yourself, if my raw bench goes up, I'll bench more in the shirt. And all of a sudden, I'm having really bad shirt workouts because I was investing too much into the uh, raw right. bench. And so I had to back it off and drop it down to where it would to, it would allow my shirt bench to go better. I, and I can relate so, with that, Bill. Back in that. the day, you know, my raw Sorry. bench, if I focused too much on it, you know, it, it could be up around 675. But when I kind of slacked on it and let it fall down between 585 and 620, my shirt bench took off. And that's what was most important. So Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and it's hard. You know, it's, you know, especially if you get some guy who's benching like 600, and you're training at 575, and he's like, yeah, I beat yeah. Ryan Yeah, I've heard you're it like, before. Like, nah. yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you go, you know, go, you know, I'll see you at the contest. Oh, wait a minute. That's right. You only bet 700 to me, you know? <laughs> and that's <laughs> so, true. That is true. Absolutely. That's, yeah. that's happened more times you know, than once, it, Bill. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the, the fact is, is I don't care. When you go and look at open powerlifting, hey, let's look at the numbers. I don't care what you do in the gym. I don't care what you do in the workout. I want to know what are you doing yep. at me? Where are you ranked? Then, then that talks. That right. that speaks volumes to me because you and I both know the stress of the timing, the judging, everything else going on in a meet is a lot more stressful than doing it in a gym. That's that is true, Bill. You know? Definitely. Yeah. This has been eye-opening, Bill, and uh, you've uh, laid so out a wealth fun. of information, yeah. um, Great tricks, information. secrets, training strategies. Um, we, I've learned so much more, more tonight about bench pressing. I didn't think this interview was going to go like this, Bill. I thought we were just going to have standard questions. You just opened up the book, so much like so much information, yeah. Bill. You're you're a walking. We're going to learn fountain. about you and have a good time, but we've done that and gotten you're so much information a fountain of information bill you got to write that book and, i yes. mean and you can't put a price on that book i mean if you lay everything down that you know and have acquired over the 40 years of, of training i mean because it's you, yeah it's uh, wow that's all i can say and i've been well, wanting to have you on the show you. for a long time bill we talked uh, you know last year incredible. and you mentioned you want to be on the show then like thanksgiving came and went and i know we've been mentioning it yeah. when we ask our fans you know who they want to see on the show your name keeps coming up so yeah. we kept promising it and we're so glad that i turn on the internet and bill puts like... up the be most beautiful all-time world record bench i've ever seen and i was like i'm gonna reach out to him <laughs> see if he wants to do the show and I'm, i think i really appreciate yeah. you taking time and i'm I hope that your day goes great tomorrow. I know. Looks like I'm one sorry in the morning. we catch up so late, yeah. but we really enjoy I know it's selfish, but we've really enjoyed this and, and learned so much. You're so. more than welcome to come back anytime, Bill. Oh, yeah. Just say the Absolutely. word. If, if you want to awesome. do a part two, we're always here, and uh, we'd love to have you again. And um, uh, I can't thank you enough, Bill. I mean, yeah, no, this, this totally. has been an awesome time. It, we it, really it, appreciate your time. Time has really flown, but it, it's just been, I've, I know, I've been taking a lot of notes. I it's like three hour, the three hour mark. Like it just. Yeah. I think, so I think this might be your longest show. <laughs> I <think laughs> Definitely. It, I, I, like I said, it just flew it by. Flew by. I, I like looked up like at the, cause it tells us exactly how long we've been on. And I'm like, Am I reading that yeah, wrong? Yeah, three hours. Holy three cow. hours. Three hours of Bill Gillespie. No absolutely. Idea. Yeah, and we've still, you know, got got people watching, you know. So wow, Bill, amazing I, interview. I'm just, I'm just in awe, and we I can't, I, I can't say thank you enough. enough. I know we're both stumbling and talking oh, over good. each other right now, but we're just. And, and, Ryan, I've always admired you, and I've always cherished your friendship. You. And I told, I, I told you when I come on, I really want to share a lot of information, and it was important to me. That I chose this venue. I appreciate that, Bill. Because I know that it was people that are listening to this interview are people that want the That's information. That's true. Oh, absolutely. They're the people. They're the people that are hardcore in the bench right. pressing. Yeah. You know, and it's not just some nope. fitness people. Right. You know, these are these are the people that are hungry. Mm -hmm. You know, and, I, and when I was in college, I was throwing the shop, and I just I kept going. I went up to this coach from South Carolina, and I said. Hey, could you help me? And he goes, no, I can't help you. Because he knew that if he helped me, then I may make his guy look oh, at yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, I just, I just need some help. You know, I just needed some coaching. Right. You know, and uh, I, 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 it was just like, I just needed information, yeah. you know. And so here now, I'm that guy. I have that information. I can help people. Now, I will say this. Don't contact me and ask me to do personal no, workouts no. okay i walk okay. and train i don't okay. do that okay i don't do that i don't right. have time right. um i i'd rather just share this information 
But for me, if you train with me, then I write okay. up your workout. But I, if you don't train with me, there, there are too many subtle things. I got too many obligations on yeah. the job that I got to do, and I don't want to do online training. All right? And if I did, it would be inferior to what I normally would write up. And I don't want to do – I don't do that. I don't do anything without right. excellence. Right. And um, – so, well, you got a lot of you got a lot of hunting and fishing thing. to catch up on too, Bill. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, sure, sure. Hey, now if I ever come out there and the sturgeon are running, now I saw you. I, I would love to hook it. Yeah, yeah. yeah they um, love to take you out. When, when's a good time? Uh, April is a, there's a window there where they're they're heavily feeding before they spawn. In the summer, like when um, the shad start running. Uh, in June, when the uh, when the shad are coming up, is a good time. Catch some shad and tie them on to for some bait for sturgeon. And, and, you know, tie on a shad that's oh, yeah. like that oh, big. Yeah. Yeah. That's gonna catch a nice size yeah. fish. You know. And then. That's what we use. We use the same thing for the oh, yeah. perfect, yeah. The same mm-hmm. shaft. And then yeah. I think use a casting think, net. How do you catch them? Yeah, I think November. I think shad. October, how do, November. How do we use that? How we catch them? I'm oh, the shad. We use uh, what are most successful ways? Uh, we use a, a wiggle wart with the hooks off and a 18 inch leader and a dick knight, That's and then right. we just troll with it, and they hit that little that little spinner. Those um those really? American shad. Oh, it's, Bill, it's like one after another. Boom, boom, you catch like 15 boom. in like 10 minutes. And, and then, then you go anchor, anchor up and, and drop a whole shad down and, there. Yeah. yeah. We use those big old casting. Oh, those work too. Just oh, okay. Throw them out there and then pull them in and try to catch you some shad, yeah. you know, because that, that shad is gold for uh, those casters, like man. Okay. Yeah, those yeah. shad up here. So if you, ever can come, if you ever can come out, I'd, I'd love to take you fishing for catfish and then take you bow fishing. I got all the gear. Never done and, it before, Bill. Never, oh, done, never done, done it. I thought that looked oh, pretty I got, freaking I got, cool. I got, I got, both of you. I got a bow for both of you. And, oh, my gosh, promise you, promise you, everybody I've ever taken, they were like, this is the greatest thing I've ever done in my whole life. It's so much fun. It was just you're shooting Where do you live at, Bill? Where, 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 really where do you cool. live at? I've seen it. In Central Virginia, Lynchburg, Lynchburg Virginia. Lynchburg, Virginia. I'm going to write it down. Yeah, there's really no, <laughs> there's no, uh, you're going to Lynchburg. There's no, I'm just passing through. Okay. There's <laughs> Lynchburg is a destination okay. of its own. I got to look okay. it up on a map and see but exactly nice where you're at. Town. So, okay. Yeah. I know yeah. where Virginia's but, at. Uh, I just got to figure out where that is exactly. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. I'll tell you what, the uh, bow fishing is just, we go during the day. I don't have the lights to do right. it at night, but oh my gosh, we just have so much fun. You just shoot and shoot and shoot. You know, and you know. I just tell guys, don't wait for the perfect shot. Just, just sling an arrow. Nice. You know, and if you get, if I hit one, I want you to shoot it, shoot it, mine it, so that I get another arrow. Wow. I say, so then we'll have a better chance because we'll hit, we'll hit some monsters like four feet long. Oh, monsters. seriously? And just, yeah, yeah. Those big old carp, and they'll just take off, and you hear that line. <laughs> Holy cow. We'll get you up here and tie you badass. We'll get you up here and tie you into a ten foot sturgeon and see what type of conditioning you have. <laughs> we usually have to tag team them when oh. we get them that big. I mean, they are they are strong well, these, like, these pound giant fish. arms and he'll be like, Here, take uh, it. I need a break. Take it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Yep. So strong. I got a boat bill with all the bells and whistles on it too. So if you're ever up here at the right time. Definitely, okay. we can go out any anytime, man. I'd love to take you out and uh, oh, absolutely tie into some yeah. fish. So, oh, that'd be great. It'd just be great to spend. Some yeah, it's time been so long. Guys. You know, I said before we did this interview, I was trying to think, and when was the last time we our paths had crossed? And I, I, I think back to Wabdol, and I, I don't remember another meet ever seeing you anywhere. I mean, it's time has just oh, flew. Yeah, it's been yeah. so long. Crazy. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy yeah. how fast time uh, flies. But thank you so much for oh, having me. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully, I remembered. I, I wrote a list. Uh, I legendary strength gym where I train. Yeah. They let me train for free. I bring my own gear there. Uh, appreciate them. Um, yeah, plug your sponsor. Oh, I no. meant to ask. Usually, I have that quote. Yes, please. Any sponsors? Yeah. Anybody that you'd like to give shout outs? Right. Yeah. Right now, I I usually yeah. ask that question. So, so are next. Yeah, I, I, I wear uh, special socks for my legs. They're called from Lasso, and um, they're taking very good okay. care of me. Um, they're doing the, they're the ones who fly out a film crew from LA to do a, a documentary on my okay. bench press on me. So yeah, That's it's pretty awesome. cool. Uh, I did a podcast with them on 
Tuesday, and it went really, nice. really well. They work with a lot of professional athletes, uh, but uh, no, I don't. You know, I don't really seek out very much sponsorship because I don't like being tied down to a company. Yeah, you totally. know? It's like, you know, if you go with one of the powerlifting companies, and it's like, oh, that's so cool. But now, wait a minute, this company just came out really great bench, shirt, right? And I want to use you're stuck that in really marriage with another company. Oh, totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I got money. My <laughs> wife and I, you know, my wife, my wife is super successful. Good. She's a director of 10 mammography centers. Whoa. And uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, she's just under the uh, vice president. And so, uh, you know, that's why I can't just take any job. She makes so much money. So the way it works out really nice now where I can go, I travel, I get paid to travel, go visit my friends and uh, just hang out with How them. How long have you been married, Bill? So, uh, in March, it'll be... Uh, Bill, years. that's awesome. Congratulations. That's congratulations. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And she is absolutely, I, you know, I know Garrett's I say, I'm supposed to say this, but she is absolutely beautiful. You've seen I, her, right? She is gorgeous. And she just, she holds her beauty unbelievable. I mean, she just looks so young. And uh, we, we were at a restaurant recently up in Connecticut. She hates for me to tell the story. <laughs> but she's never going to, she's never going to hear this. And the waitress comes up to me and she says, Excuse me, sir. Um, is that your wife? And I'm like, yeah. Um, can I ask you a personal question? I'm like, okay. And she goes, has she ever had plastic surgery? Oh, wow. Or and I said, no. She goes, oh, my gosh. How old is she? I said, well, at the time, she's like 57 or something like that. And she goes, oh, my gosh. I'm 37. And I look older than she does. <laughs> Oh, that wow. is awesome. I mean, uh, <laughs> kind of a personal yeah. question, but a huge compliment, really. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. Uh, I mean, she's, she's very strong willed and keeps me in place. And uh, I cherish, I cherish her. I miss her because I've been gone since right. Tuesday. You know, I miss her already. But, you know, I'm down here with uh, Sornex. We're having a conference called Winter Strong. Um, uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, 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 a country singer. Anyway, he. Oh man, it's on the film. He's coming to do a video on uh, on uh, Friday, uh, Saturday, excuse me. Um, but he's a real famous country oh, singer, okay. and he's friends with our owner. And so, and, and Jocko, you know, uh, he, he might be from uh, Jocko, the guy who does the different podcast. But anyway. He's supposed to be him and Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan wears a, a, a Sornex. He's a Sornex oh. guy. We built a weight room for wow. him. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they just recently built a weight room for uh, Sylvester Stallone. Oh, wow. uh, oh, yeah, yeah. We are, we are called, in the industry, everybody considers us the cool guys. All right. Um, I mean, we, it's so, it's incredible the people we get to hang out with. And they come to this conference. But the cool thing about the conference is, is that they don't. Nobody has a name tag, so you don't know who Talk you're to. talking to. Wow. So, yeah. So you can be sitting there talking to somebody, and you find out, oh my gosh, that's so, well, Cameron Haynes. You know, it does. You know, is super famous uh, yeah. podcaster, and you're like, you're, you're eating with this guy, and you have no idea. <laughs> that's who kinda he cool. is, you know? That's kind of cool. You know, and, and all that's of a sudden you go, oh my gosh, he's so so. <laughs> yeah. That's oh awesome. wow, so, Bill, you're lucky. Blast. You're a lucky yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like and, so yeah, much fun. Bless. Yeah, bless. That sounds like so. And I want to congratulate yeah. you again on that bench press, Bill. Yes, it's it, it, um, a it very beautiful lift, it and you worked hard, perfect. and and you're just an icon to the sport and an ambassador, and um, you're just an awesome individual, Bill. And it's uh, it's, it's considered been a pleasure getting to a great friend, and, and, talk and, to and it was an honor having you there when I benched my 800 for the first time. I I remember yes, you were there. I remember that. I was I remember. On, man. I was like, <laughs> yeah, it seems like yesterday, <laughs> but uh, I remember you being there, and um, yeah. yeah, it just brings back good memories, man. But well, let's, thank you, Bill, and I'm sorry yeah, to keep you up so late. Sorry we kept you so late, but we really, really enjoyed, enjoyed this interview. I really enjoyed it, and uh, I'll I'll take me about two hours to unwind. <laughs> but I, I, <laughs> I told them, I said I, I may not be there first thing in the morning. I said, you know, I said uh, this thing may take a little longer yeah. than I thought. 
but I was I was fully okay. ready. As long as I'm standing, I'm doing pretty darn wow, good. Wow, Bill, yeah, you know, I, I didn't have, mention that. I can't I'm have a single see, problem. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, which is a miracle. I know my wife was praying yeah. for me because I mean, it just, I just didn't <laughs> tell, you know. And uh, this went beyond my expectation. Now, if I sat down for five minutes, you'd be like, oh, yeah. crap, what's wrong with it? You know? <laughs> I'm glad it worked out, Bill. I'm glad it, it worked out. Yeah. Well, that's, this, yeah. this has been so, just wonderful. Awesome. So hopefully maybe next time I'll figure out more secrets that I haven't shared. We'd love that. We'd love to have you back, Bill, anytime. <laughs> would, just yeah. a text message away yeah. and you're on in, in any the Thursday. Next day, any day you want. Yep, any it, Thursday. It, it's open, Bill. Say I want to be on next Thursday. Boom. You want to come come on and plug a, on. plug a book or anything oh, yeah. or just talk lifting? Absolutely. It, you're more than welcome to, yeah. Bill. This has been an honor. Love it really has been. Awesome. Yep, true. Really enjoy it. All right, Bill. So, well, we'll let you get going right, so friend. you can try to get some sleep. And we get really can't say thank you enough. And I just this has been thank great. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, good night, Bill. And good night, everybody. Yep. Have a wonderful night. Have a great week, night. everybody. Enjoy the rest of your conference. Good night, Bill. Bye. Good night.